Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's about that time. Season 2 of EGFC Rocket League kicks off right now. Today is going to be a fantastic one, full of fantastic games and players bringing you through all of the madness. My name is Dor, and I am joined by the always wonderful Cool J. How are you doing today, bud? I'm doing great, and we got a lot of great games coming at you today. I'm really excited for the new EGF season. Uh, we're going to be starting off with a heavyweight matchup, University of Delaware facing off against RIT, two of the best schools from last season, and they had a whole offseason to work on their mistakes. They just couldn't quite get there in the end, and so they're going to be hungry for some victories. Following that up, we've got Fairfield and Siena, Seton Hall and DePaul, and then Butler and Marquette. We're going to have more matches later on after that, but just giving you a nice little bite-sized taste of what we got coming at you real soon. Yeah, I mean, UD and RIT, two really big returning schools, like you mentioned, always battling for that second place. UTA was just at the top, untouchable. But even these yeah. rosters today, they're coming in with a lot of really, really notable players, ones that we've seen before. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that'll be nice as well to kind of see how they've worked on their games over the off offseason. Um, so it'll be really fun to see you know, we already knew these were some great players. We also see some new faces as well. So, you know, maybe bringing in some new freshmen, some fresh meat to the squad. We'll see how it works for them. I think it might just be what these teams actually need to get going, right? You look at what these teams did last season. RIT, always aggressive, always flashy. The best defense is just a stronger offense. And they were always going on the attacks, and they would do so fantastically. They had some of the most impressive-looking goals in pretty much all of last season and not by a small margin ud was very much the opposite right it was more less the university of delaware more the university of defense the way they were playing right they just held back all the time but they were solid rock solid fundamentals rock solid mechanics they just held it down time and mm. time again so whether yeah. these teams can gain a little bit of one another hat i think it's gonna be a big question heading into today's first game which we're gonna do ladies and gentlemen here in a second let's kick it off right ud RIT to break open the day. Game one starts. Of course, it will be a best of five. UD in the blue, RIT in their signature orange. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and kick us off, Cool J. Yeah, well, the kickoff starts, you know, pretty uneventful stuff. KG Kendall playing it into RIT's side. Oh, man, back and forth goes Josh V getting a nice little save. They weren't really sweating too much on that one. Oh, but, I mean, maybe they're going to be. Delaware threatening already. Getting some good rotations on the offensive side. Sunblaze going to get the connect there. Going to clear it out. Oh, back and forth we go. And uh, now RIT threatening a little bit themselves. And what are you seeing so far from these two teams? I mean, it's a classic RIT D matchup. It's bound to be pretty dead even until someone hits a shot like that. Sunblaze, uh -oh. the captain, the consistency, the glue that holds RIT together is coming in for the first one. It feels just appropriate, doesn't it, Cool J? Oh, yeah. It's always fun to see the captain come up big there. The first goal of our EGFC season, and it was in pretty fun fashion. Only about 30 seconds into the match, so we're already off to a quick pace. Let's hope that it stays that way. Some action-packed matches is what we're used to seeing here, especially between these two teams. Some high-flying offense. And it's already RIT, they're threatening again. Sunblaze playing it into the corner, but Vixa, they're going to get a touch. And Vixa, I'm pretty sure he's one of their new players. I don't remember seeing him last year. Yeah, haven't seen him around too much. Josh V, I believe, was floating around if memory serves right. I know Bindo and Sunblaze are, are absolutely no surprise to see on the RIT roster. And this matchup, similar to last season, is playing out pretty much how you expect it, right? UD. Is playing a lot of defense, but don't mistake that for playing badly or not having possession of the ball. Oftentimes, they're in control of the game. It's those counterattacks just like that that you really yeah. have to look out for because they're when they move forward, they are quick. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is, you know, we already know KG, Kendall, and Grau are great players. We saw what they could do last year, but Vixa, you know, seems to be a new variable for this squad, and whenever you add in a new member of in any case, but especially in the case of Rocket League, they have to figure out their timings. They have to get their communication down. And this Ooh. may well be one of... Oh, you that was a very points. close chance there. Yeah, definitely going for the style points. Uh, but, you know, it, there's going to be a, some growing pains here. So I'm expecting Delaware. They're a great team. I think they're going to put up a good fight. But definitely going to need a little bit of time to work through and get used to having this new third member on their team. 
Yeah, already though, you, you can see them, the old habits are still there, right? Even with the new player, they come in, they're adapting to the game style. And what we want to see from Vix is to like bring something new, right? To give this team the edge it didn't have before, to give them a little bit more pressure in the attacking half on a consistent basis. And to do what RIT do well, and actually just create opportunities from everywhere on the field. For RIT and Josh V, we need that defensive Ooh. end to come in. We need the rotations to be solid from them. But right now, this opportunity, it's all about UD. They're going to have another shot here with Bindo aggressive out. We get a nice little clear back into the corner. We're just playing a little bit of ping pong. And you know, yeah. I'm surprised it's such a low scoring game with RIT in the lobby, but it is what it is. With two minutes left, UD have an opportunity to open Ooh. it up and tie it. No! Wide miss. Grau's going to gain control of this one, create another opportunity. And this is what we were talking about, right? When UD yeah. get the ball, they don't let go of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know what you were saying about it being ping pong? I think RIT would be very happy to play ping pong. Uh, you're right. They are usually a high scoring team. But in this case, they're respecting the strength of this Delaware roster. Even with a new member, they want to hold on to this lead. They want to secure the win the right way. So, you know, playing keep away that really makes it a game against the clock and that is always going to be in rit's favor as we're running up on 90 seconds left in the game still a one score lead really in rocket league that's anyone's game as Grau works his way through here going for an aerial dealt with pretty easily there by bindo oh Grau with the demo gonna prevent the clear but sunblaze is right there to back up his teammate there's just so much pressure coming out of ud right now but none of it is resulting in a goal even with the demolitions rit their defensive rotations actually look fantastic right now. One more touch could put this ball in, seal the match. No. Vix is in the way with one minute on the clock. Feels like this might just be the opening that UD need, but no, a demolition shuts it right back down. It's RAT on the counterattack. And they've got all the time in the world to do it. They just keep lobbing the ball up high, putting it into corners, making it really awkward Ooh. for UD to play that slow game out of their half that they really want to. Now, UD, they're going to have to make risks. They're going to have to leave openings. And RIT, you know they're just waiting for one of those. Yeah, RIT can smell blood in the water. They've been playing very passive the past few minutes, but you can see them flying into Delaware's half now. But Delaware bringing it back. The Big to seize the opening, and the rookie scores the first goal to equalize with 30 seconds left in the match. That's a way to make a statement coming in. A big one for UD, right? Going down a game... In a series against RIT is never good. Like you said, when they smell blood in the water, they pounce every single time. So evening up the score is going to be nice. It allows you to go back to playing that style that you want to. UD can now go back to playing their game. They don't have to take risks anymore. They can play defensive, play for the counterattack, and build out of their own half without the fear of that timer running out at any given point in time. One thing they should fear, though, is RIT and their constant scoring opportunities. Just the pressure yeah. everywhere in the attacking half that these guys are putting on. It's non-stop for UD, even for a team that's as defensively gifted as they are. It still must feel like so much pressure. And oh my god, one over the top. Oh, oh. Josh oh. V puts it away to the corner, but the ball is still up in the air. It's still another cross from Sunblaze. Laying it down, waterfall off the roof. Bindo for the redirect. Can't get it. It's on the ground. First happen. game of the year. First game of overtime. I feel like this is fitting. Cool, Jay. Let's go. Yeah, you know what? We love to see it. The EGF action one day in, and we've already got an overtime match, and it is a nail biter so far. We're gonna look to see who can pull out the win. Vixa, of course, was able to get the punish on the overextension by RIT, and of course, RIT need no introduction. Their scoring is basically at will in many cases. Uh, but this time, they've been struggling a lot. KJ Kendall sets it up over the middle. Josh V does a good job of setting that one back out. Now, he's looking to come up the sideline here, but Grau hits it right back into the danger zone here. Delaware, they are looking to end this one right now. Bounces it off for KJ Kendall, but... And that's another time I wanted to say this earlier. I feel like so many times, Delaware are getting insane setups in front of the goal. I think three or four times this game, and there's just no one there to follow up on it. And I wonder how much of that is this new player how much of it is this communication not quite there but Vixa settles my concerns right there finishes it off that time when it counts two goals for him and there it is two to one Delaware takes the first game of this set yeah one up for UD and doesn't this just feel like how it always goes RIT is always a team fighting to get in and they start so strong but once UD ad adjusted to that pressure it felt like their counterattacks became less about speed and more about ball control. And right, yes, RIT are good at playing fast. They're good at controlling the ball and keeping pressure on it. But when a team slows down and they're able to play just a very, very 
slow game of Rocket League mm. appropriately, I think that's yeah. when RIT really start to struggle. They start having to slow down themselves, which is something that they're really not used to. Usually they're the ones driving the match, but UD wasn't letting them do that towards the latter half, and I think that's what really got them the win. Yeah, and I think the other thing I love to see is Delaware, you know, really standing up to the challenge. They know that RIT is a great squad, but they're sit and they're sitting there down one goal only 30 seconds in, and they say, you know, we're going to play our game. We know that we can win play our game we're going to stick to the game plan they made it happen here we are in game two though is rit going to get the response bindo already going very aggressive on the kickoff here trying to set something up over the middle not going to be anything doing vixa actually this could be a dangerous ball but it's collected by rit at midfield and you know what if there's anything that rit know how to do it's how to make a comeback right they they know how what it takes to be mentally strong and to come back in these games. And a lot of that is because of how they come back in these games. For RIT, an issue is never solved by actually addressing your problems. It's just by adding more offense into the mix. And you can already see the aggression that they're willing to go for. They're playing for every ball, every bounce, every single touch. Oh, yeah. They're challenging here. Even the ones up in the air. Vix is going to play it out and across. Josh B is going to be up and on top of that. Even if they don't have a shot at the ball, they're constantly just creating pressure. Ooh. And the big question is, are UD going to crack? Yeah, that was a nice little style play there. Uh, didn't really have any velocity on it, so not much chance for a score. But KG Kendall and Gra going for that little 2v2 play off the wall, but Josh B aerial dribble from midfield oh my goodness he is going for the style points and he's making them count on the scoreboard that's the aggression josh v's up and i feel like it's just rookie night right now these guys are coming up big both vixa and him so whether or not they can continue that is going to be a question but i feel like they both slotted into oh, one of those oh. play styles perfectly but oh no oh, oh yeah you know what it wouldn't be Rocket League without him. Kickoff goal from KG Kendall. You know what? He played the kickoff really well there. He actually tackled yeah. the whole ball, recognized where his opponent was going, brought it across. It's one of those small things. It is a mechanical thing. It's not pure luck. There is a degree of, right, I want to line up. I see what my opponent's doing. I want to put the ball over there. He set up his teammate, got perfectly yet again. Touch over top is going to miss, but it's definitely deep in RIT territory. Like that image of the... Um one lady and all the math equations are like flying in behind her as <laughs> she's like, trying to do all the calculations split second we saw a little bit of that there uh really good play from kg kendall to even up the match now three and a half minutes to go bindo plays a slightly concerning ball i really don't think delaware was sweating too much on that one but it does put rit in an advantageous position here sunblaze can't quite find the angle to hit this back and now we are in the neutral zone. Bindo, the higher man wins on these aerials, but in that time it is not the case. Bra plays a gold where it's just a little bit off target. Now coming back the other way is RIT, maybe? No, unable to clear it out. They're now just kind of trapped in their own goal. Vixa here in the corner are looking to make some more magic happen, but nothing doing this time now, Bindo. Coming down the sideline, can he make something happen? I feel like both of these teams are kind of forcing things on offense, but defensively they're staying clean. And I think that's the important thing. They're not really overextending just yet, not making any of those mistakes that could be punished. Yeah, RIT and UD operate in two very different styles on their attack, right? UD is all about <laughs> ball possession. RIT is all about challenging the ball and creating opportunities. But defensively, they're both operating on the same principles, right? Don't over-rotate. Don't go for anything that's going to get you scored on outside of the net. And I think that's a big adjustment for RIT that they've changed over the post or over the offseason, rather, is they're not going for as, quote-unquote, desperate attempts at the ball. That one, though, is a little bit questionable. They should be able to clear it out to KG Kendall, but it still is back in UD hands for another shot. Great challenge by Bindo that have played out to some place. Could be a quick oh, counterattack, but no! The missed flip is going to put it right in the hands of Growl for a shot of his own. Now we're playing ping pong again, and this is exactly oh. where UD wants to be, where they have an opportunity to slow oh. this ball down. But some place over top, he's got a shot. Growl with oh. the save. Oh, and I could see that one from a mile away, the setup coming through from RIT, but apparently Growl saw it from a mile away to put Kendall. Oh, boy. No! That is not the miss you want, and Josh V, <laughs> great one. I mean, into the back of the net, you take what you can get. 
2-1. RNT's not complaining. A minute 30 on the clock left, though. And it's a pretty similar situation to game one. Relatively low scoring, especially for having had RAT in the game. And UD is going to have to take some risks. They can't play like old school UD right now. They need to be finding shots on the back of the net. I do agree. I think they really need to get some kind of scoring opportunities going. Uh, but the way RIT is posturing right now, they want to keep going. They want to keep their gas, their foot on the gas pedal. And I think that plays right into UD's hands. They can still play their counterattack style, and it may even be more effective. Uh, but we'll have to see. Kendall does go for the demo, and now we see a counterattack opening up. Grau bringing it down the sideline here. Sunblaze does get a touch, but Vix is going to touch it in midfield. It's going towards the goal, but just off target. Bindo going to knock it away as well. Set up over the middle. Sunblaze hits it back into the midfield. KG Kendall sets up for a nice hit, but Joshi able to get the aerial. Now we're playing a little bit of ping pong, and it's always fun to have some of that. Grau hits it goalwards. Again, just a bit off target. And I feel like we're seeing too much of Delaware just hitting it towards the goal, and not enough of them really trying to get any setup plays. I think that's the difficult part, right? You're running out of time. The pressure's on to just take the shot. You don't have the oh. leisure of getting those setup plays. Good shot at the demolition from Growl, but not able to get it. And one big thing that I think RIT is doing to stop this whole thing is they're taking away a ton of boost. UD just can't keep up without that in their canisters. Look at Growl already out. All he can do is set up his teammate with 10 seconds on the clock. You need more than that, my friend. Sunblaze into the center. KG Kendall with maybe the last opportunity that UD are going to oh, get before RIT managed to tie it. And with the demolition, that should be it. Another one from Sunblaze. He's merciless. Trying to just lay the ball down. Oh. UD could play this one oh. out of their own half. Wait a minute. They've oh. got a shot here. Oh. Oh. Oh, so close. So close there at the end. Graw with some position over the middle. But RIT just barely able to knock it away. And so far, this match is more than living up to expectations. RIT punching back in game two with a 2-1 victory of their own. Now, to be fair... They did get a little bit of an assist from KG Kendall. Um, but regardless, they were the better team in that one, and they won. Yeah, and it's so weird watching these teams go so low scoring. If you remember a couple of their matches from last season, even the ones that the during bracket, during I feel like we saw some double digit scoring. Yeah, from like, like the like scores were up, times. I think minimum like yeah. five, six aside. And it is cleaned up so much. I think a lot of that comes down to these teams understanding, okay, right, what do we need to do differently to improve? And they've definitely grown since the previous season, right? They, they've adapted yeah. and changed and not just use the summer as a summer, but use the summer to grow. And that's really, really good to see from both of them. Fortunately for us, it means they've both grown Ooh. equally right now, and it just means a banger oh, of a match. Oh, 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 oh Vixa! Oh, Really, that was a team effort. KG, Kendall, and Grob both setting him up right there. <laughs> right place, right time. And I think that's the first time that Delaware has scored the first goal. Isn't it? I believe so. And kind yeah. of against swing is not something that we see UD do necessarily all the time. But for them, that's even more comfort, right? They, they barely get scored on to begin with. To put one up and give themselves an advantage is a whole other thing. And they didn't even have to push that hard to do it. It was just one big push from Vixa. And again, that's the difference maker, right? You get someone new in with a couple new ideas. I don't think old UD goes for that ball. I don't think old UD goes for that demolition. I don't think old UD scores that goal. But yeah. this isn't old UD. They're up 1-0 right now. Vixa's looking for a second all the wow. way over top. Unfortunately, not going to be finding it. But has opened up the door for UD to gain a little bit more possession. Yeah, it has, but RIT actually just bringing it back down. Josh B plays it goalwards, but I'm not sure he really had an idea with that one. Vixen now coming the other way. It's now in no man's land here at the midfield line, but RIT bringing it in! Sunblaze! Style put galore! We talked about it all day in another equalizer in an incredibly fun series. Come on, son. That's that's vintage RIT. And not, not in the bad way. Not in the overextend into the attacker's half and get scored on from the other end of the field. No, no, no. That's just pure Sunblaze and Bindo magic. These guys fly in from everywhere, score goals from anything. That's what makes RIT so threatening. Right? Their mechanical ability is unmatched even by people like uta right uta were fantastic but 
I don't even think UTA matched some of the mechanical prowess that we saw out of RIT. They just made up for in raw teamwork. And, yeah, and yeah. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, that's tragic. <laughs> I, I mean, it's only fair for what KG Kendall got earlier. Yeah. But at the well, same time, this, you have to feel bad. You really do hate to see it. Sunblaze knocking that one in. Really, Graw knocking it off of the uh, enemy gamer there. But, you know, an eye for an eye is the code of the world. And this time, it goes in the favor of Delaware, who have a 2-1 lead. But there's a lot of Rocket League left to play. Three minutes to go. Sunblaze with a demo. Maybe looking for a counterattack opportunity. Josh V and Sunblaze playing it in the corner there. But Graw comes right on in. Vixo, tr oh, that was a sneaky little touch. A little bit off to target, though. You have to wonder, if the demo didn't come in, that could have been a dangerous play right there in front of the goal. Now, Delaware, they're getting attacked on by RIT, but they're looking to bring it back. A demo again from Sunblaze. Man, he is just headhunting out there. And, oh, it is a bloodbath. Graw with a demo back. He's saying, you know what? You're not going to hit my oh teammates my like that. Just what stop. is going on between these two teams? This is the feud between these two, right? They've been rivals. Oh, no, 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 no. They both miss. Vixa sneaks another one in. I got no words. I mean, he just, he threads the needle. That's a nice little chip shot goal right there. And he brings it on in. 3-1 now. I mean, those 3-1 leads are pretty dangerous. But in this case, I think Delaware is feeling pretty confident. Yeah, Delaware are going to be feeling great. RIT, definitely not out of it. Still half the match to go before they're actually in a position where they should be worried. But nevertheless... A position where they're not comfortable. Another shot from UD would be really what did it for him, right? Scoring three goals to catch up to a team like UD, you can just pull the e-brake, park the bus. If you start getting yeah. worried, growl from the side, oh for another shot. No, no hat trick for you, my friend. Not quite yet. Still could sneak one in here from the side, but growl is a fantastic redirect. Oh, oh my God, what, what a, a shot! What a setup from, from KG Kendall. What? And this is what I'm talking about. This kind of... They are the veterans of this team. You know, and they have the chemistry. We saw how well they played together last year. And incredible stuff from those two. An incredible touch from Graw and a perfect setup from KG Kendall. Those two just have an awareness of, the, of this game that's really on another level. And we're seeing it on display here. 4-1 to one now for Delaware. After a close series up to this point, Delaware is looking to make a statement and try and take this one for themselves. Well, I think they've got this one sealed up. I think RIT needs to start looking at the next team. And then, you know, three goals is comebackable, especially when you get one there. It's doable for RIT. You know, maybe don't check out quite yet, but yeah. I think you have to step on the gas pedal, right? Whether that's next game or whether that's this game, you have to come back blazing the same way you did in game two. Just put on a little bit more pace, start putting the aggression onto UD, and trust your rotations, right? These guys are fast. They are the quickest team at EGF. They need to start acting like it and use it as an advantage. Yeah, definitely. The mechanics give you a huge advantage here. Obviously, the team play is important, but this is the thing. A minute to go, a two-goal lead is really not much of a lead in the world of Rocket League. RIT especially embody that statement. They love to score goals in a hurry. And I, I don't really think that Delaware can afford to put their foot on the gas pedal. I think they need to play a more safe style. With the with the time remaining on the clock, you know, playing keep away is very effective, you know. It may not be the most fun strategy to watch, but if that's what wins you the game. But meanwhile, oh my goodness, attempt after attempt here, RIT got three or four in a row there that were just barely near misses. And honestly, I'm not sure if Delaware was even worried about it. Now they see a counterattack. Vixen are looking for another shot. He's a little bit off target there. Maybe looking to keep this clock running rather than get on the board. But I don't know about that logic. 30 seconds. We've seen crazier stuff, right? Georgetown, I think, scored somewhere around the lines of six goals in 30 seconds last season. So it's still a record worth... We're, we've yet to see beat. Yeah. But I doubt it's going to be in this game. I doubt it's going to be against a team like UD. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. 12 oh, seconds. Oh, Is this no. it? Not in the first oh, game. No. Not in the first match. I mean, that's what we're used to seeing here in the EGF season, though. This is the type of action you can come to expect.
Ladies and gentlemen, RIT threatening. They're down by one goal. 12 seconds left to go. Bags against the wall. Can they make it happen? Here comes the kickoff. Time is ticking down. Binto with a shot. Oh my goodness. He can't get the touch. Put your behind him. Oh! Oh, look at the team play. All three members getting involved to tie up the game with five seconds left. Oh, dude. RIT never fail to impress. How do they do this every time, Cool J? You know, I don't know, man. They're... I think they do it on purpose at this point. They, they really, they're just trying to get my heart rate up. They're trying to give us something to shout about. They want to give us a little bone here. Oh so we are going God. to our second overtime of this series, four to four. And if you're not on the edge of your seat, you're not paying attention because this is an incredible match. All right, shots in from both sides. Overtime, tense as ever. No, we have played one earlier on in this series and this game is going to be for match point. The UD square. Oh no, they snuck it in. RIT it caught out of rotation. And UD are going to take a quick one home. They're very happy to find that. The longer that OT goes, I feel like the more pressure UD gets under, the more stressful yeah. it gets for him. So finding that is absolutely massive for this Delaware side. Now up at match point, RIT forced with coming back. They were able to do it in that game, but being able to do it over the course of the match is a whole other thing this team has to just keep slamming on that gas pedal driving it through the floor because that's what rit do that's what they know that's how they improve and i'd be happy to be proven wrong right now and right see them pull out some quicker defensive rotations and build out of their own half but i mean you can't expect them to just change play styles entirely in the middle of the series i think if they devote yeah. themselves to what they do they know they can win with it they just have to play a little bit better at it and push their advantage Let's head into map number four here between UD and RIT. Yeah, so here we are. It is officially match point now between these two teams. Well, match point for Delaware, RIT, they still have two more to go. Raw hits one goal words, and Delaware are keeping up their pace from the last game. They don't want to give RIT room to breathe, and it's Ooh. working! KG, Kendall, and Vixa! The team play from this Delaware squad is incredible! Avixa is just slotted in perfectly. He's just the right amount of aggression that this team needs. He's challenging all those kinds of balls, going for 1v2s. This stuff you expect to see from an RIT player, not a UD, but he's coming in. He's creating a ton of opportunities in almost every single early goal. It's been Vixa creating it, and it's so big for UD. Yeah, it's huge, honestly, because this Delaware squad, they were already good. But you were right. you're right, they were very one-dimensional. They had the counter-attack style, they were incredibly good at playing the turtle, looking for mistakes, and capitalizing. You know, and it worked for them, but they couldn't always beat the best teams. They struggled against the teams like the UTAs because of that weakness, because of that one-dimensionalness. And now they have a player like Vixa who's able to help find these openings. And you know what? I think my points from earlier still stands. I think they can still make their communications better. I think they can still make their rotations better. And they're already looking incredible against RIT, another one of the top schools here. I really think Delaware took this offseason over the summer here, and they said, we want to be the best. We want to be number one. They're like, Ash, catch them. They're going to catch them all, and they're going to go for all the wins here. Up 1-0 early on, three and a half minutes to go. Bindo was threatening a bit, but really, I don't think Delaware's even catching a sweat off of these attack runs from RIT. No, this is basically training mode for UD. Unless you're creating some serious threats with some mechanics and some speed, you're just not going to be scoring on the Delaware side. Now Grau's got another one of his own, plays it close oh. corner. Good Ooh. job, though, why Sunblade is making oh, the man. save. But remember, a lot of these players are going to be low on boost now. They went for that challenge. Bindo gets a clear off. If this ball stays in RIT territory any longer, they got to start getting worried to clear out. Sunblaze has a redirect shot straight up. Vixa, good save. Solid stuff right now from UD, holding strong with their one goal advantage. If they're, you, you know, we talk all the time about how little a one goal advantage is, how much more it is to have t a two goal because that one can come out of really anywhere. It could be cross field, oh, oh. could just be an open Ooh, net. Yeah. But against cross UD, fields. a one goal lead is just suffocating. It's, it's yeah. suffocating to watch. You can feel it from RIT. They're oh, getting no. desperate. They're leaving oh, their own no. goal open, and Vixa is there to punish. Yeah, in exactly as you said, it's suffocating. As this RIT side, you're just looking at that 1-0 scoreline. You're saying, please, please, one to one. We can do it. We can put goals up. We do it to everyone in the EGF League. But 
that's what happens. They get so nervous. They get so antsy looking for that goal. They overextend and UD, that is their bread and butter. They see that and they attack and they get another goal here. And now they can play even safer. We did see RIT come back from three goals down last game, so it's not out of the question for them. But where where's the the fire is my question. Right? It feels like a lot of these shots are just simple setups, and as much as simple setups may work for a team like UD, for RIT, when you're trying to force so many attacking opportunities, you just gotta get more creative with them, which is just the nature of of the way they play. I need to be seeing things off the ceiling. I need to be seeing things waterfall down. I need to see passing plays from midfield. I I haven't seen much of that. It's been very straightforward and they're only catching out UD when they slip up. And now they're getting laid shot after shot after shot up against them. Some place has a 1v1, but winning that is trivial for UD. Yeah, definitely. So the 2 0 lead now. 90 seconds left to go. Josh V bringing it down into the corner. Trying to see if he can get something, anything going. Growl with a long dribble. Bindo says, not in my house. He's going to come up and contest that one. Not going to let him get the style points or a third goal. At least not for now. But coming back the other way, Josh B. Not quite able to get the hit on it. He is going to be able to knock it out for the time being. Growl and KG Kendall. All three really posturing around midfield. KG Kendall does get the touch. Putting it in the corner. Now Bindo back into the middle, back and forth, playing the ping pong as we've talked about before. It really favors the team that is ahead, and it is working out incredibly well for Delaware so far. Oh, oh my growl! All right, he's not done playing around with his food quite yet. All right, Tina, three down, 45 on the clock. For UD, this would be a huge opening the season. Knock RIT down a peg, 3-1. Right, every and single time we've seen this game, it's either gone to five or it's gone to seven. Just depends on the length of the series. However, yeah. RIT, well, they, they still got a shot just as much as they did in the last one, but it feels just You've as difficult. Do things happen. Yeah, exactly. It, you, you never count RIT out, but I don't know, man. In my head, I'm starting to count RIT out. This is crazy from UD. In my mind, UD has won this series. Whether it's in four or five, I don't know. But UD in so many ways has come out they're putting the league on notice right now because last season they were a one-dimensional team and now they've added they've got depth to their skill they've got depth to their strategy and they've gotten better as well oh okay so a little bit of a play there bindo and sunblaze seven seconds for two goals theoretically possible the opportunity Vexa, for, for yeah, RIT. Vexa getting caught there uh don't like to see it I wouldn't say RIT is RIP. I think in this match, maybe. <laughs> I, I think in this match, maybe. RIT is still a great team, and we saw a lot of that today. They're still a great team. But what we're seeing is Delaware is an even better team. They're even better than they were last year, and they're even better than an already great team in RIT. And there it is. And another incredible redirect for a last-second style goal there. And that's going to seal. One victory, Delaware taking down RIT here in the first series of the EGF Season 2. What can we say, man? UD came to play, and by no small margin did they impress us. Vixa looked fantastic, brought a whole new dynamic to the team that they never had before, and ground KG can't, I mean, it's just a, it's a walk in the park for these guys. They're so used oh, yeah. to these consistent shots, these aerial ones off the wall, building out of their own half. They've still got that strong UD core, just a little bit more bite. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a little bit more bite. And that's, I, I think that's the best way to put it. They're still very good, very disciplined. We still saw them when they needed to, bringing out that counterattack style, like in game one, um, bringing out that counterattack style when they were down 1 0 and punishing RIT's over aggression. Just really fun stuff. But trust me, both of these teams are going to be teams to look out for throughout this season. Do not count out RIT after just this game. Absolutely not. And you know what else you guys shouldn't be counting out? Our next matchup. It's Fairfield taking on Siena. We'll be back with that one in just a bit. Until then, you guys have a good little look at the rest of tonight's proceedings. There are a lot of games to come, a lot of Rocket League to be played, and a lot of fantastic players to be watching. So stay tuned. You won't want to miss it.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Just popping in before our second matchup of the night to save that Fairfield versus Siena has been delayed. It will be happening. Don't, don't worry too much. Uh, but Seton Hall versus Paul is going to be coming up next. Just due to a couple technical issues. Nothing too crazy. No one's going to be punished or penalized for it. Just going to have to change the order of the matches. So, all you Seton Hall fans and you DePaul fans, you're going to get your matchup nice and early. We'll be back with that one in just a sec.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're up and set for match number two yeah. to get underway. It's going to be Seton Hall versus DePaul. It's going on right now. We're going to hop straight into the action. We expect, we expect some improvement from these teams, right? That, that's the number one thing that we really, really want from them. Yeah, definitely. That's really what we're looking forward to seeing from these teams. I um, mean, no, both of these teams, they had some respectable performances, but overall kind of a bit of a down year in the EGF season last time around. But here we are in season two, and they're looking to change their fortunes. So far, scoreless. We are seeing some new members. I believe Rumble and Lavish are both new on the side of DePaul. Uh, I do remember Gravity, but Vibes... Coming in and bringing the good vibes there with the first goal off the assist from Green. That's what you really need to open up against DePaul. I, I put both of these teams at around a similar standing regardless though, right? They, they need to beat one another to put themselves at a distinct advantage because I think this is for each of them is going to yeah. be the most hotly contested matchup. For Seton Hall, it's the biggest opening for them to find a win. And for DePaul, it's their biggest opportunity to show improvement since last season because I feel like their showings in the postseason really didn't offer much even though it looked like they were going to be doing pretty well towards the end of the regular season. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so we'll see how they really use this offseason to try and improve. I mean, obviously Seton Hall getting off to the start they were hoping for. It's a long season, but starting it off with an opening goal within a minute is just really nice to do. You know, you can only play the schedule in front of you, so... They're not too worried about how good or bad DePaul is. They're looking to play the best Seton Hall Rocket League today. And that's what we're seeing so far. Yeah, and going with Seton Hall, I think we need to talk a little bit about the players. Green, Breezy, we haven't really seen too much of before. Honestly, this entire server is relatively new. So it's, there's uh, a lot of the line, right? I think both these teams have a ton of potential. I feel like I remember Breezy. Vibes? That's a good question. But yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of new faces on this field here in Breezy. Showing it ain't easy being Breezy, but he makes it look easy with that goal right there. Absolutely. Three minutes on the clock as well for DePaul. There's plenty of time for them to try and grab this one back, and it feels like they, they should be able to. It's just a bit of a, uh, we'll, we'll call it warm. We'll call it knocking the rust off. When we get past game one, and we, and we don't see any improvement, then oh. we'll call him. But if you're scoring goals Whoa. like that, who's ever going to count you out? Yeah, I mean, making the plays, those are stuff we usually see in the RIT games. Uh, but this time around, DePaul with the big play rumble, with the score in style. But they're still down one score lead. Not much of a lead at all in the world of Rocket League, as all the casters like to say. opening here for DePaul to push they haven't found much if any pressure off the back of it and that's going to be a big issue for them right moving quickly was never exactly a thing they were the best at but who knows with the new roster they could show us a lot of new things the ball's been floating around the midfield for a while Seton Hall finally the ones to play it towards center and Green's got an open net and Dreams are going up 3-1 and those are coming true Seton Hall going to retake their lead just halfway through the game yeah, I mean, increasing the lead back to two. Seton Hall, incredible stuff from them. Um, really just looking like a different team. Well, that's, I mean, it literally is a different team. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess it is. So, Seton Hall, they said, you know what? We didn't have the best season last year. Let's get out on the recruiting trail. Let's get hot. Let's get rolling. And it's working out so far. A great start here, and we're continuing on. But DePaul, they were no slouches on the recruiting trail either. They've got two new hires here, Rumble and Lavish. We saw Rumble put in a very stylish finish early on. Lavish has been quiet so far. Gravity, we've been used to seeing him. He does get the demo on the vibes, and maybe we'll see a counterattack attempt, but nothing doing so far. DePaul trying to hit it in, but now it seems like Seton Hall is going towards that ping pong play style that works so well when you have these leads. Yeah, just maintaining the ball position, keeping it up out of the hands of your opponents. There's no real ball position from either side, right? You're willing to give that away when you have such a comfortable lead. 
In fact, it's, it's working for them outside of that, right? They're getting a lot of opportunities from this. DePaul have to make this counterattack where it's a shot towards midfield. That's going to be easily saved by the Seton Home defender. The only real hope there is that there's going to be a rebound and some sort of counterattack. But even then, it's been locked down by Rumble, who's got another clear one on goal. Plays it long post. Vibes with the save. In one minute, just about to tick down the clock, all the pressure on DePaul. Yeah, so much pressure on them, not just fighting against Seton Hall, but fighting against the clock now, too. As if Seton Hall wasn't enough of a challenge, as it seems so far today, they're playing very well. Green bringing it back the other way here, going into the corner. Rumble, we saw him make some plays earlier. He does get a nice touch there, but nothing doing. Gravity can't follow up on it. The rotations, the communications seem to be slightly lacking from this DePaul team. And, you know, it shows in their offense. Their defense has been, you know, okay. Giving up three goals, not great, but not too bad. But really, on this offensive side, they've struggled to get anything going at all. 30 seconds, two goals. We saw RIT do this earlier. Up against much worse odds. The big question is, Ooh. can DePaul replicate that? And with the timer continuing to down, it doesn't Ooh. feel like this. The big question now is, what can you do going into game two? How can you adjust this team? And personally, I feel like it's just speeding up those rotations, right? They've just been playing a yeah. little bit slower than Seton Hall pretty much all around. Yeah. But being able to pick it up, play at the same pace. And I feel like you're okay, right? Their ideas, their tactics are solid. They've been playing mechanically fine. It's just about being able to keep up with the passing play of a team like Seton Hall. And it's no small feat, right, being able to catch up to somebody like that. But I think it's something they can definitely do, especially as they warm up throughout the series, especially the more they get going, especially the more they get used to playing with one another. Because I'm sure they've practiced. Of course, they've scrimmed. But there's a certain degree of difference whenever you actually get into the important games. Yeah, definitely. De that definitely is the case. Um, I think you asked a good question. What do you do going into game two now uh, as we're almost ready to do just that? Um, I think really the most important thing for the side of DePaul, I think the pieces are there. I think they're, you know, the 3-1 scoreline is a bit misleading from that game one. I think they were right in on a lot of those plays. As you mentioned, they just got to speed it up just a little bit, and they'll be able to make those plays that they weren't quite making in game one. We'll see if they can go out and do just that as we are officially back out on the field, and we've got rocket cars flying at each other ready to go, and we've got Tone on the field this time, a mid-game sub. And that's pretty rare. Notably, Tone, not Tones, two very different people, unfortunately. Coach Tone, even, heading up the team, which feels appropriate. It's not gonna win you anything quite yet. I, I, for Seton Hall, this is just a comfort sub, right? Get your players in, keep the legs warm, with axles, wheels, rubber, engine. Whatever analogy fits there. <laughs> 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 gotta you know, get it going somehow. Going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, we do love to see Tone out on the field. Uh, he wasn't just the coach last year. He was uh, one of their starters and one of their best players. Um, so we'll s it's interesting that they are going for these mid-game swaps. And I'm wondering, maybe it's an early season thing. They're trying to get some experience across all their guys. Maybe they're trying to see what combos work out best or... You know, maybe they just said, you know, you'll take game one, I'll take game two. You know, <laughs> who knows what they could be thinking strategically, but DePaul, I know what they're thinking. They're thinking score. The score is still even, and DePaul has been playing very aggressive early on in this game. We'll see how it works out for them, because I don't want to see them overextend and get punished. It's a lot longer into this game than it was last before we saw our first goal. And it could be even longer. There's plenty more time, but it's all been Seton Hall in the pressure. Green's got oh. an open shot. Never going to miss that one. Not a day in his life has he gone without creating an yep. opportunity like that and finishing on it. Vibes with the nice setup. Green with the great angle. And this is what I'm talking about, right? That speed of play. When DePaul has been trying to play up against it, they send two people forward. They're over committing to these balls. And it's mistakes they wouldn't be making if they didn't have to play up in speed. But... Unfortunately for them, they're the ones playing catch-up and always behind right now. It is a doable comeback for them, especially with three minutes left in the game, but it's definitely tricky. Yeah, and I mean, in my opinion, not just speed, but the comps as well. Uh, both Rumble and I believe it was Lavish there. Uh, they were both there and they both committed to that ball, even though neither of them was going to make it. And wow, Vibes puts that one right in. 
Uh, but it's about kind of the communication on the defensive side. You need somebody to stick to the goal, and you need somebody else to go for that 50-50 ball. Um, and it just seemed like there was a lot of indecision there. And we saw it again on that goal as well. Incredible stuff from Vibes. And Seton Hall are continuing to put on a show here in this second game. Two up, pretty much the same exact position for DePaul that they were in last game. But I feel like their defense has been all right. But the attacking side is really what's been letting them down for a majority of this matchup so far. They haven't created any solid opportunities. I don't want to hark on them too much, right? Seton Hall are playing great defense. But if there's one place that I think DePaul could make, you know, a quick comeback or a quick adjustment, it would just be committing a little bit more on that attacking side, trying to set one another up rather than going for individual touches. If you get touches like that from Lavish and Rumble, that, yes, you're challenging the ball, but you're not creating an opportunity when you're challenging the ball. And that's the difference between somebody like DePaul and a team like RIT. RIT, yes, it looks like unbridled regression. It looks like they're just attacking everything, but there's method to the madness in there that a team like DePaul hasn't quite figured out yet. Instead, they've set up the cross. Green's up and over, but not into the net. So that's going to be Coach Chone setting up a cross for Vibe, oh, laying man. it right up in front of the goal. DePaul are oh, happy no. to see that one bounce at oh, least no. one time, but they're not done yet. It's Coach Chone <laughs> over top three and oh. Seton Hall to set themselves up nicely to go to match point. Yeah, what a great setup here, Tone, with the whoops into the chat. Uh, incredible. All three members getting involved. I think all three members had at least two touches in that play as well. Really just beautiful set plays from them. Driving circles around DePaul right now. All right, well, now we're getting back into it. Gravity going towards the middle of the field. Back and forth. Actually, DePaul... Looking to maybe strike back here. Didn't quite work out. Seton Hall is able to clear the danger temporarily. Ooh, but Rumble says, I am the danger. And he's rumbling on in for the score. You know what? It's good follow up and a good start of the comeback for DePaul. However, you can't be relying on mistakes from Seton Hall. I want to see them create opportunities the same way Seton Hall have. Right? Get the ball into the opposing half. Look for these crosses. Look for things other than individual plays. You'll be setting yourself up pretty nice. Have the balls in their territory. They have an opportunity to build out of the half here. It's a great touch. It's just vibes in the way, but he beats up gravity, and therefore gravity will strike. Of course, playing down the laws of physics is something he's especially good at. And with one minute on the clock, he's about to recognize that the laws of time are just as important. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is what we talked about in game one. This is what we talked about all through the first series. Oh, my goodness. As Green just puts another one in. He makes it look easy. He makes it look so easy. Coach Tone setting him up perfectly there. And right into the corner. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely great stuff from Seton Hall. Four to one with a minute left to go. And Ooh, no way. No brutal. way. Oh my, I can't finish a sentence with this team. I mean, and if I it wasn't for this replay, to. they'd score again. Well, at 5-1, DePaul has quite the gap to overcome. There's plenty of room for improvement with this team. It feels similar to how it did last season, which is not exactly satisfying. But at the same time, you have to understand, right? They, they've had summer. Most of them probably haven't been really going, scrimming as a team. It is understandable, right? A lot of these esports organizations do take a break over that yeah. period. There's not as many tournaments to be participating in. So you're kind of just getting your bearings again. Not everybody can be going, scouting out perfect new players like a UD or like an RIT, right? Some teams just don't have either the infrastructure or the just ability, right? There's also the degree of school size that comes into question for some of these guys. Sometimes you just get the pick of the litter. And we've seen teams really improve. I'm trying to remember. It was Niagara. Niagara last season. Oh, my God. Right? You're looking at a team that goes just like 0-9 in the regular season, turning around and challenging teams like UD and RIT yeah. in the playoffs. And that's the kind of thing you can have with some of these teams. And everybody wants to be the, the new Niagara, the new underdog, the new dark horse. And I don't think we find out a lot of that until later when we actually see these teams take it a step up. Yeah, definitely. You're absolutely right. There's always a chance for a dark horse. There's always a chance for a team to improve throughout the season. You know, we talk about the offseason. The offseason is critical. But, oh, as Gravity gets a nice little consolation goal there. A little, little bit of style points for him. Um, but, you know, 
we talk about how critical the offseason is. It's not the only time that teams get better. You know, these teams are always looking for ways to improve, and there's always chances for them to really kind of bring themselves back to that next level, like you mentioned Niagara did last season. But DePaul having a rough, rough day today so far. It's 6-2 to two there in Game 2. They are down 2-0 as we head towards match point for Seton Hall. Yeah, I think it's about time we, we kind of flip the script, right? We've talked a little bit about the woes of DePaul and what we've seen from them. Let's talk about Seton Hall. They look pretty strong. This has been consistent. They've been playing faster than DePaul have been able to. We'll see whether or not they can keep up with the big boys in a bit. But as for a first showing, solid, right? What's going to boost your confidence more than just a solid go at it? A 6-2 game right off the bat. Looking to take 1-3-0, and they've set themselves up to just fine for DePaul. There's opportunities here. There's a chance for them to come back. But it's going to take the four reverse sweep if they want to do it. Yeah, definitely. And a reverse sweep is always hard. But especially against a team like Seton Hall, the way Seton Hall is playing today, it's going to be even more difficult than normal. Uh, but we'll see if magic can happen. Rumble has made some magic happen already throughout the day. But unfortunately, it's been a bit of a one-man show from this DePaul squad so far today. More pressure within the DePaul half. They're playing out of their own, which is comforting to see. But again, it's in the attacking half that a lot of their issues have arrived. Do we think yeah. they can actually try and create those, right? Like, just commit a little bit more, right? Move forward with your rotations. Bit. You see two people sitting in goal right now. There, you don't need to be doing that when you're trying to build out of your own half. It takes players to build out of your own half. You can't be discouraged and say, oh, I guess we're not able to attack. We need to be keeping people back. You got to... Sometimes you got to just go for it. And yeah, I think for them right now, that sometimes is a lot of the time. Yeah, really what I see from this DePaul squad now, they're kind of demoralized. Um, they don't have the confidence that, oh my goodness, Rumble trying to make me eat my words. He goes for the very flashy play. He did score on a play like that back in game one. Uh, this time doesn't quite work out and they may have overextended. Indeed they do. And this is what they're so scared of. This is why they don't want to leave their goal because they go out for the flashy play. They actually get a pretty good setup, but they're just a little too slow on the follow-up, and Seton Hall punishes them hard. One up. It's the smallest gap that we've seen between these two teams, and if DePaul can find a goal here, I'm feeling all right about their ability to stabilize, at least for now. It's a double commit from Seton Hall and an opening, but DePaul missed their opportunity, and now Seton Hall can start building out of their half again. The DePaul players are all going to be relatively low on boost since they spent so much time yeah. here. Big commit into the midfield, leaves the goal wide open for Green, who gets the cross off. Ball laid okay, out, though. Breezy's nice. the one to receive. Yes, some good touches there from DePaul, trying to keep their goal safe, trying to stop the bleeding here. Um, but it's more than just stopping the bleeding. They've really got to get a counterattack in, and so far, nothing doing. Lavish with a great clear there, though, and that might set something up. A great touch from Vibes. Oh, and a great follow-up from Green. Rumble is able to keep it in Seton Hall's half for now, but I think now we're going to see Seton Hall setting up to go back in. Both players flying past the ball there, the ritual of Rocket League. And now Breezy setting up over the middle, but that one was not going to come easy for him. Rumble now coming up down the sideline. He's going fast. He's got gravity over the middle, but Green just goes right in for the challenge. He was not having any of that. Exactly what you want right now, though from the paw, right? A little bit of challenge, a little bit of gusto, a little bit of moxie. Something to challenge these players. He's letting oh. Breezy take this one for free and he's happy to. Plays it in for a two goal lead with two minutes left and Seton Hall are inching their way towards honestly what might just be the first 3-0 I've seen from them in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since we've seen a 3-0 like this. Uh, DePaul certainly has shown some signs of life. But here in game three, they seem to have disappeared. Now, hopefully they can make me eat my words here as they come on down. Rumble setting it up over the middle. Gravity was there, but where it was lavish, nowhere to be found. And the setup just yet again, they're getting great setups and there's no one there to follow up on it. They almost get punished on the back end as well. Uh, Rumble going for the demo now, and that actually may get an opening as they come on down. Green into the corner, coming up the center of the field. Back and forth they go. DePaul seeming to threaten, but Seton Hall really not breaking a sweat. No, these guys are not going to crack under pressure. 
Or the 2-0 lead. All they have to do is defend, right? All they have to do is hold their ground for a little bit. And they'll be all right. Good to oh, so close from gravity. Trying to knock that one in, get the Dunkaruski. But no, it's Rumbles with the turn. Upper bins. No! They're getting so close. Uh, Where was this earlier, DePaul? They're finally showing some attacking, finally committing for some of these balls, challenging for everything, oh, bumping oh, people oh. around. This is what we wanted from them. It's just, is it too little, too late? Yeah, it, it might be, but the thing is, one minute, a lot of time in the world. Oh, oh my goodness, he comes in there at the final hour and he stopped that one. I thought for sure DePaul was going to get a goal there. And it seemed like they thought for sure too, because all that energy that they had just moments ago seems to have been deflated out of them like a needle popping the balloon. It's all gone. 40 seconds left to go. Can they find that energy again? Only two goals. It's a much smaller gap than it was in games prior for DePaul. Remember, you don't want to open up the season with an 0-3. They want to come back, show a little fight, give a little, give a little bite to their bark. It's getting close. Not the best seconds. touch from Rumble. One goal here would be just a nail in the coffin. It would end everything for them right off the bat. Good play in the midfield. They're putting so much pressure on. Where was this earlier? It's such a shame to see, but they've warmed up. I feel like this is just a sneak peek for we could expect oh. from this team later. Look at all these passing plays to pull. You're giving me so much hope, but it's about to be taken all away by the timer at zero seconds. That's going to be it. Seton Hall take this series three to zero, keeping the ball up for as long as they can, just for a bit of a good time. GG's all around. I mean, fantastically played by Seton Hall. I have yeah. to give them all the props in the world for the performance they put on. Stepping up big time from last season is one that we expected to be even, but they came and out of the water cool jay this is a fantastic start for the seton hall side to pull up a little bit to work on but i mean if that's not promised at the end of the game i don't know what is to paul they have a tough matchup coming into seton hall here on day one um obviously they have two new members they're coming after a rough season last year as well um so they came in they did not play as well as they wanted to i'm gonna say that you know i don't think they're gonna disagree with me but I think there's a lot of positives they can take away from this game. Like you mentioned, when they have the motivation, when they have the energy, you know, they're missing these plays by inches. By inches, they're missing these plays. And they're not only in these games, but maybe winning some of these games. Maybe taking this to four or five games against Seton Hall. Maybe even taking a set against them. You know, I think this team is right on the edge. And so I think if they can really get back to the practice board really try and see where things are going wrong work on those comms a little bit more trying to be a little bit faster i think we're going to see some good stuff from them throughout this season however seton hall 3-0 exactly how they wanted to start they're imposing their will looking like a great team and they're happy about this win yeah and you know what else it's not over yet so we can be perfectly happy as well butler versus marquette is coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get the match locked and loaded for you, coming as quickly as possible. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. EGFC Season 2 continues with its first opening night. We've got match number three up on board. Butler versus Marquette. Two teams that could use a little bit of improvement since last season, but they both came out swinging towards the end. How are you feeling about this one, Cool J? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I'm... I'm kind of excited for all my games today, but I don't really know what to expect out of this one. As you mentioned, these two teams had a bit of an up and down season last time around, but here we are in season two. They've had a whole off season to prepare, to get ready, to improve, and we'll see if all their hard work paid off. This is what it all comes down to here on day one of the EGF season, and I'm really excited. It should be a good match. I, I think it's going to be pretty close. That's That's my expectation for this one. I think it'll be back and forth for maybe five games. Should be pretty fun. Yeah, I'm just about ready to hop into it. I'm not personally expecting a 3-0 unless either of these teams have had really big roster changes, but neither of them really have. Butler's still loaded up, and one of the players I want to point out on this side, Sir Aaron, fantastic player. The core yeah. of this team. And even though it seems like I believe both of the other teams have been replaced, so Jiggy and Kai are both new. Uh, Sir Aaron is certainly a fantastic piece to be building off of. Looking at the other side of Marquette, it's uh, it's JFG, right? Classic player, Nito Burrito, we've seen around a little bit before. However, they've got a third man floating around here a little bit. Son of Car, who's new. It's always great to put some faces to these names, see what kind of gameplay they can give us, and what level of Rocket League we're going to get from these teams, because, you know, everyone's starting off somewhere, and there's clearly some teams that have practiced over the summer, that have been ready and rearing to come back and make a mark. Yeah, well, Sir Aaron, you know, the most important part of this game, he's already rocking the loot llama. So he he's basically got a free goal for his team at this point with, with that kind of points, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but we see him going there, Sir Aaron hitting the aerial, bringing it all the way down the field, but JFG hits it right on back. And I'm interested to see, oh, already getting some bloodthirsty action between these two teams. I was going to say, I'm interested to see how they set the tone because this doesn't set the tone just for this set, but really for your whole season. Um, how they want to play this game and how what their style is going to be, how well they're going to go. So we'll see these two teams so far playing a pretty back and forth. A little bit of ping pong, a little bit of smack the ball back and forth but uh marquette well they were threatening but dealt with pretty well there by butler yeah you and i know more than anybody else how important that first goal is to just setting the score putting yourself ahead deciding how you need to be playing for the rest of this match right now so far is a great shot into upper bins it's top left for the first goal of the season from marquette put in by their new player of course it just feels like rookie night man every single game We've had the yeah, opening the goal scored by somebody new, and this time at Son of Car, fantastic placement, fantastic play so far. Keep it up. Yeah, as you mentioned, freshman showing up big tonight, but a Jiggy on the Butler side really set that play up. He had a huge misplay. I don't know if it was a bad touch or maybe he just didn't see um, Son of Car being right there, but in any case, Son of Car is gonna say, thank you very much, I'll take that free score. And a 1-0 lead with about three minutes to go. Marquette looking pretty good so far. I mean, it has been a pretty even game outside of that one score. And that's why they can sometimes make all the difference. But this time, Kai can even things up. Good shot by Kai. And we, we promised this one would be even, right? And it's exactly what you expect from these two teams. They both have such solid rosters just right off the bat. They're building off of some of the strongest pieces that they had last season and coming and swinging and I feel like the level of play that we've seen already has just been so much more than what we got out of EGF last season that's not to say it was bad it's just to say these guys are taking it more and more seriously every time and those underdog teams are tired of being underdog teams and they know what it takes oh, yeah. to actually get up there they've seen some of these teams rise and fall they witnessed Niagara get so much better and nearly come back at the end of the season they've oh. seen RIT and UD constantly nipping at the heels of UTA and they can follow after that example find shots like these JFG into upper corner no great save by Kai to keep it out now it's Butler on the counter-attack yeah you know Marquette they had the upper bin score in that first goal JFG had an incredibly placed shot there it was stopped oh good defensive rotation from Butler there. that was a very dangerous attack that Marquette just brought in and they dealt with it perfectly 
Uh, but really some impressive mechanics on this offensive side for Marquette so far. We'll see if they can keep it going. Nito Burrito doesn't have very much boost, but nonetheless dribbling this ball down the sideline does get interrupted by Kai. Senekar going to win it at midfield. Back and forth it goes. Sir Aaron knocking it into the corner. Can they get a setup? I don't think so. Nito Burrito looks to, is going to be able to clear this one, but not for long. Yeah, tied up with 130. See, feeling like a lot more of one of the lower scoring games that we've gotten tonight, but you know what's crazy? Is we haven't gotten any really high level, or high scoring games rather. Right? Yeah. Last season it was 10s, 9s, Goring double digits fest. everywhere. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is much more subdued. The team's rotations and defenses have gotten so much cleaner. Yeah, and this is, you know, what we're preaching. This is what we love to see here at EGF. It's about building an infrastructure for these teams to improve year over year you know both of these teams really had you know not the best seasons last time around and coming in in here they are looking much better S certainly still some mistakes to be made um, to be improved upon but you know this is what we really like to see we like to see these teams playing more disciplined really playing as a team and really understanding what it takes to get a win in the egf league 30 seconds Man, what are the odds we go to another overtime right now? We're that would be great. So many tonight. And yeah, this another... would be a third one. Yeah, oh, probably. but JFD's not. Oh, what a save! Oh, no! He knocked it out! Oh no, JFG! You did so great to set that up. Jiggy just tears it all apart. He makes up for his earlier misplay, and now he's posturing here. It's gonna run out of time here. They're gonna have to keep this ball in the air. Son of Car with a big aerial dribble. Sir Aaron gonna go for the challenge, but this ball is gonna. Oh, just barely missed there. JFG had a chance to keep it up. But now we are in overtime. Our third overtime of the day, at least on this mainstream. Maybe on the other stream, we were having more overtimes. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, we've got oh, so much Rocket oh. League action. It can't possibly be contained to one. JFG getting the demo there. But Marquette are not sweating this one at all. They're going to be able to clear that ball out nice and easy. Oh, and Son of Car maybe has an opportunity. Nice touch from Kai, but JFG coming right on in. You know, Burrito here in midfield, but he's going to have to back off. He doesn't have the angle. Oh, that was an aggressive play from Butler. Almost going for it from midfield. But Marquette are there to stop it. And remember, this is just game one, ladies and gentlemen. Already neck and neck like this. And it only gets better as these players get more warmed up. Yeah, Marquette's been looking on fire. They've been keeping so much pressure onto Butler. Butler's not cracking under it, though, and that means Marquette needs to be careful that they don't over-rotate, that they don't over-commit to any of this. There's going to be dangerous opportunities in their half when Butler get their hands on the ball. And they're starting to now, this turn, though. Nope. Marquette building out of their own half. Off the top, down in. Oh. No, Jiggy's there for the save. Yeah, that was a nice little drop down. Not executed <coughs> quite perfectly, though, because his teammate was not there in position to follow up on it. But now JFG skyrocketing down the field. He plays it over the middle. Son of Car with an aerial back into the corner here. But that one's dealt with pretty easily by Butler's side. Nino Burrito gets some touch on it. That's better than nothing, but it actually may have put them in a worse position coming back around the side here. Now Marquette trying to slow down the pace. They're worried about Butler. Butler coming in for the score, but... Jiggy, if he could have been there, that would have been a goal. That would have been game one for Butler, but they couldn't make it happen. Back and forth, these teams go. We're already two minutes into overtime, and you can feel both of these teams itching for a goal. Nito Burrito with a demo, and that might be the opening they needed. A big aerial dribble for JFG, Ooh. but Jiggy, perfect timing on the save. However, the danger is not gone. Kai looking for the clear, and he gets it. Great defensive play from Butler there. Yeah, and you can already see how these teams form out, right? You always say a, tr a team's true colors come out when they actually start playing into overtime. Oh, my oh. God. The aggression of Marquette has come to play. You know, I was about to make a comment on how Butler's turned into an even more defensive team over these past two minutes, but it doesn't matter. Marquette's there. The pressure matters. JFG throwing shot after shot after shot at this goal matters, and yeah. it takes away a game from a strong start for Marquette. Yeah. Yeah, Marquette definitely did a great job in that game, getting that win here in game one. And, you know, that's what we've been talking about all day long. That You want to start your season off strong. You want to make a statement. You want to show up and show that you put in the work in the offseason, that you are ready to come out and win games. Uh, winning games is not all they're looking for, though, Marquette. They want to finish out this set. That was a good way to go, but it was very back and forth. So I'm looking forward to game two here.
Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting a couple server issues, so we're just going to restart that back up. We'll be back in just a moment for game two. Stay tuned, because this one, it's only getting better. gentlemen we're back with game number two between butler and marquette coming out strong right now marquette up 1-0 but it was hard fought from butler who sent it into about yeah. two and some change minutes of overtime oh. and already are coming back with the vengeance in this one opening goal from jiggy yeah the non-stop action continues here jiggy getting a very early goal there only took 10 seconds for him to get back on the board flashing right in with the score and we're back to it on the kickoff. Marquette, they did get the win in game one, but obviously striking first is Butler. So we'll see, can Butler try and take a game back here? Send us to a game three with the series all tied. Sir Aaron bringing it into the corner, but he gets stopped up real quick. Jiggy went for a 50-50 ball there, but he didn't quite come out on top. Kai with a nice hit there. Nito Burrito deals with it pretty well. Now Jiggy has full boost. He picked up the big coin there. He is going for this aerial. He's using a lot of boost to do it. He used all his boost there. Not sure that's what he was looking for. Now, over the goal is Marquette. Son of Car with it. Into the corner. Can't quite find the hit he's looking for. It feels like they're kind of feeling out this Butler defense here. I'm not sure if they just didn't get quite a good feel of it in the first game, but so far they're trying to see, you know, where are the openings? Where can we attack? Um, not really fully setting up for these plays just yet. No, they don't want to commit too, too, too much right now. But honestly, I feel like it's a pretty stable game for both sides. For Marquette, all it takes is one of those strong breakaways, one of those quick attacks that they've been yep. finding time and time again. Oh, yeah. There it is. JFG, oh, yeah. coast to coast, puts one in. Yeah, and you were just saying it. All it takes is one of those long straightaways. JFG is able to get it, able to get the demo, able to get the long-range goal. And even up the score, three and a half minutes to go. And this series continues to excite. I'm really enjoying this one. I'm looking forward to it, though. But Jiggy, he did have that big mistake in game one where he basically laid up a free goal for Marquette. But outside of that, he has played a very good series. He scored the only goal for Butler in game one. Um, and I believe he scored their goal in this game as well. So good stuff from him. We'll see if he can keep it up. Dead even three minutes in. The game hasn't been particularly fast scoring, but I feel like these teams have only increased in velocity as we've 
gone on, right? The passing's gotten better. The pressure's gotten better. And now the shots are all here for Marquette. They're looking strong. Set one up. Kai over top to get the clear. That's an important one, though. That relieves a lot of pressure off the back of Butler. That's time for them to go get boost. Time for them to reset. Time for them to start building out of their half. But they haven't really gotten the chance to do in recent memory because Nito Burrito and crew have been all over this midfield, suffocating them back into their net. When Butler get the opportunity, they need to make the most of it coming out of their half. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, you really said it well as well. They were playing slow out the gate, really trying to feel each other out, like I said earlier. And now, though, they feel like they have a good read on what their opponents are trying to do. And we are seeing them come out in full force. We're seeing demolitions. We're seeing them use up all their boosts, going for these big plays all the way back and forth. But now Sunakar has a little bit of an aerial. Oh, the double demo back and forth. Now it's a 2v2 for a few seconds. Everybody's going to get back onto the field now. All good and ready to go back. Kai with a huge aerial. Jiggy. Oh, my goodness, Jiggy. You almost messed that one up, but you made it happen. You made it work. That's an important one with two minutes on the clock. Marquette has struggled to find the attacking half in this last little bit. It's been super duper back and forth before then. So now it's about playing fast, getting that ball position, because whichever team has had a hold of it, hasn't really let go of it oh, in some no. period of time. But, oh, Ooh. it's close. Good save by yeah, Nino to make sure it doesn't happen. So Aaron now with control of the ball. Should find a good cross here. Maybe pinch off the wall. No, can't read the bounce quite right now. It's a counterattack from Arquette. Up off the top. Crossbar. No, saved by Kai. Yeah, Kai coming in there. And that was really important because, you know, Jiggy was playing very aggressive. And I think Sir Aaron was out of boost entirely. So great communication for him to be in position to make that play. And of course, great play by him as well. Just going up and hitting that ball. Having the confidence, having the aggression to know that he can make that play. Sir Aaron with the demo gives them a few seconds of three on two. But Son of Car not breaking a sweat. He's just going to knock that one out. No question about it. Sir Aaron was going for an aerial there. Just barely misses it. And now that actually may have killed their attack as Marquette looking to bring it back out Kai does get a hit he gets a demo sir Aaron fires at goal words oh but it just goes down Jiggy misses oh! it too oh my goodness two in a row from Butler that just go right off the crossbar unfortunate for them but I don't think they're gonna worry too much you know they still do have that lead it, obviously they'd like to have a two goal lead but you know you know they're not gonna worry too much about that missed goal there no Thing is though right now for Marquette they've got shots they've got opportunities they're bringing up the crossbar left and right the ball's found an open net can Kai save he oh. gets the back flip but not the save <laughs> 30 seconds left and Marquette even up the score line they're not out of this yet and they're not done with Butler yet remember if they win this they send themselves onto a match point up to a 2-0 which is scary for Butler right when we talk about how important the start of the season is how important it is to come off with some degree of victory, something you look back at and say, yeah, we can build on that. For Butler, that's getting at least one away here, but Marquette are not making it easy. Yeah, definitely not making it easy at all. All tied up and great stuff there again from this Marquette team. And it looks like we may be headed for some more overtime action. So this one is proving to be even closer than I was hoping. Nita Burrito gets the demo there. As the time is ticking down, will we see a last second goal? Well, the ball is still in, in the air, and they're just going to let it pop. Interesting. They weren't really looking for that overtime. Maybe they just didn't like the way things were shaking out. In any case, we'll see if it works out for them, because Marquette, they definitely had an opportunity to keep that overtime going. Had a chance, had a shot, but now is the real opportunity. Marquette over top. No, it's oh. Kai immediately for Butler. Just 13 seconds, and it feels like it's just kind of the EGS standard at this point. That the second overtime comes on, that ball is immediately slapped back into place. Great shot by the blue side to take away the win and even up the scoreline. It's 1-1. One, one. We're at least going to four here, Cool J. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this is what we love to see as well. Close matches all throughout, back and forth. One team takes a game, another team takes a game. You know, and this is what I was saying, too, is... Marquette, they made a conscious decision there. They said, we don't like this setup. We don't think that we can turn it around. We, we're just going to let it drop. We're going to go overtime. You know, and they go overtime and they do that. 
Uh, the mental lapses, you got to be so careful to try and avoid those plays because Marquette's a good team. We saw it in game one. You know, the, We saw it through most of game two there too. You know, They know how to make those plays, but you, know, you just lose your focus. All it takes, one moment, lose your focus, boom, Butler wins the game. Well, it takes, we're going to find a restart on one of the players' monitors, but I'm ready to hop into match two or match three. What are you looking for? Here, right? How far behind do you think Butler actually fell in that game? Because they were playing catch up for a good bit. And I felt like they repaired it. I felt like it went back to game one Marquette, but Butler is starting to keep up a little bit here. What could be the difference maker for a team like Marquette, though, to try and take this one away versus the last? Granted, how close it was. So, honestly, the biggest thing for me there was I really felt like Butler's defensive rotations were not good enough. Um, and a lot of times they just weren't getting punished on it by Marquette. Uh, both of the goals, for, well, at least, you know, the goals from JFG really were kind of slow rollers. They were bouncers. You know, they, they weren't so much great set plays as they were Butler making mistakes on the defensive side. You know, and Marquette, credit to them, they were able to take advantage of some of those mistakes. Uh, but I really think we need to see Butler clean it up if they want to win this one. Um, Marquette, meanwhile... What I really need to see from them is a little bit more aggression uh, because, you know, they, they are actually doing a good job of defending. They're not giving up too many goals, um, but I feel like they're sometimes a little too afraid to get out of their own half. Sometimes they're even afraid to contest those 50-50s at midfield. And if you can't even go up for those 50-50 balls, you really aren't giving yourself a chance in this game. No, you've got to go for everything. you got to start fighting for scraps. You can't be afraid to get down and dirty with it whenever it comes down to the midfield, whenever it comes to a lot of that neutral possession, right? You have to shut down the ping pong game. You can't allow that ball to just go from one end of the field to the other all the time. And it's all about setting the pace, right? Don't let the opponent make yeah. decisions for you. Make the first move yourself. For Marquette, they've had a lot of opportunities to do so. It's about making the most of them now. Son of Car, the 1v1, has side flip. Not much more than that, though, as it sent right back to Nito Burrito, who's going to maintain the ball in the middle of the field. Yeah, and you know, I love that you mentioned setting the pace because I feel like that is really the biggest difference between these two teams is Butler, it feels like they have their pace. They know how they want to play. They know that speed that they want to go for. Um, Butler just seems to be a little unsure so far on how quickly they want to move. So we'll see if things can get going a little bit here. Now we're already a minute in, but who is going to be imposing their will here in this game three? It's essentially a best of three now, tied all up at one. And so it's anyone's series from here on out. Absolutely. Winner of this comes away with match point, which is just as notable. We haven't seen a team break that yet. Every single time we've seen a 3-1 or 3-0, we have to see it go all the way. I think these teams might be the ones to do it, though, Cool J. The way they've been playing, how back and forth it's been. Feels like it could break at any point in time. But for Marquette, looks like they're playing well. Ooh. Kai still hitting some nut saves, though. And how many times have we seen that? Kai and Jiggy specifically playing some incredible defense, keeping a shot from Marquette that, by all means, should be going into the goal out of the net, giving Sir Aaron a oh. shot and putting it in. Butler, 1-0 building from the back. Yeah, Sir Aaron putting it in that time. And that was someone who I really wanted to hear from more. We saw Kai and Jiggy really getting Jiggy with it all up and down the field, making these combo plays, going back and forth. And Saran was certainly a good role player, being able to make those defensive rotations, just being in the right spot when you need him there. But getting on the scoreboard always feels great. And in this case, he's going to give his team the lead. A lead of one is not much of a lead in Rocket League. I say it all the time. That one could come from anywhere, whether it just be a cross, whether it be a shot from Goofy. We are yet to see Jiggy. Pardon me, it's red. It's red. No on the <laughs> counterattack. Jiggy, nice save, keeping it up in midfield. But this is dangerous for Butler. They need to get back to start making these saves. The rotations are a little bit off right now, but they force Marquette back. Now the rotations all reset. The pressure is on, and they've got a cross to do it. Sarerian with the open net. No, this is on the shot. Assume the other player was going to hit it, but now that means an open net for Burrito. That open net now occupied by Kai as he just gets control of the ball. 2:30. We're halfway through. The lead for Butler, but a chance for Marquette. Shot from JFG oh. is going to reach the back of the net. 
Yeah, there we go. Great setup from Marquette there. Relentless pressure. And JFG actually setting himself up for this goal. Two players overcommit from the side of Butler. JFG gets the punish. And it, I, honestly, on this Marquette side, it's been the JFG show so far today. We did have the one good shot from Sunakar when he got that upper bins in game one. But aside from that, I believe all of their scoring has come from JFG. And he has been putting on a clinic trying to bring his squad to victory here. Oh, man, it's a bit of a goal scorer. What can we say? I can't discredit the rest of his teammates. The rotations have been yeah. really, really solid, and they've kept a lot of the pressure on, right? You look at a lot of the midfield play, it's not necessarily JFG, right? Nito Brito's been going out. JFG's been going out. Son of Car, they've all been challenging these to keep the ball in their position, out of their half, and heading towards the opponent's goal. Butler, however, have found the one chink in their armor that they need. They're starting to play in themselves, putting a lot of pressure on. Marquette building out of their own half, though, regardless. They finally found a good bit of pressure and across a shot from Nito Burrito. Ooh. He's going to lay the ball it's up, but covering. it's just a little bit too high to be put in. Yeah, unfortunately, that ball was not coming down anytime soon, and Marquette just couldn't follow up on it. I did love that setup, building out of their own half, playing it slow, playing it very well, methodical gameplay from them. Son of Car now. It's almost like he heard me. He wants to get involved. He gets a nice little aerial dribble outplay. But, unfortunately, he's not able to do anything with it once he gets into the other half. GFG going to demo Kai. That's going to slow down their attack and allow Marquette a chance to strike back here. Only about a minute left to go, and Marquette are looking for the go-ahead goal. Kai not letting anything through right now. He, Jiggy, and Sir Aaron are playing on a string. They are three minds in one. And it is incredible to watch the way they are playing together right now. We'll see if they can put it together on the offensive end, though. And it seems like Set of Car is not interested in letting them do that. No, but he doesn't have much say right now. Because Butler intercepting every single attempt at a clear that Marquette are going for. They've got a cross, even a shot maybe from Surarian. Good save by JFJ, keeping us cool and being patient. The last thing you want to do is get scored on right before overtime. It'd be heartbreaking for either of these sides to have happen to them. With 30 seconds left, it feels pretty likely, Cool J. JFG sets up the cross. Kai needs to make this. Does manage to get a touch on it. But it's back into the welcoming arms of Marquette, who are trying to just find some sort of shot on this goal. They're waiting for the right opportunity to do so, though. Not just taking the willy-nilly shots. They're setting it up. An air dribble. No, JFG intercepted the ball. Sent it right back where it came from. Now it's on a car laying it all the way over. <coughs> so Aaron's there for the save. Sent a car in the goal. No! Oh, my Missed goodness. Five. No! Oh, but it's still up. Oh, but he just misses it. And is this our third straight game going to overtime? It might be. It is ridiculously long. Regardless, good touch by JFG denying any sort of value from the bump right now. Getting a demolition. Of car out of the half. Kai over top. Is it going to be another quick one? No. JFG is there for the save. Jiggy and Butler, though, both putting on the pressure. This team seems to come alive in overtime, but Son of Car looks to shut him down. Can't. It's back in Butler possession. It is indeed, but Nito Burrito, he's not interested in letting them do anything with it. He goes for the demo. And Marquette, they've done this a few times now. When Butler gets possession, they go for a demo, and it seems to be very effective at stopping their attacks in their tracks, really. And now here, Marquette threatening. They are in Butler's half. They're looking for a setup. They're playing it very slow right now. They didn't quite get the setup they wanted. Who's going to be back? JFG is there. Like a thief in the night, he is able to stop that attack. Nino Brito now coming back in up the field for Marquette. He plays it over the middle, but no one there to follow up on it. However, Sunakar and GFG, they're pushing up. Maybe they're pushing up too far. Here comes Sir Aaron. He fires it goalwards. They're just... Sir Aaron going to get the score. Butler takes game three, going up two to one. Another OT over to Butler, and every single time it feels like Marquette have enough traction, they're just not finishing off their shots. I feel like they're waiting for too perfect of the opportunity, but outside that, I don't know what to criticize this team for. They're both playing really, really solid Rocket League. They've both put on a lot of pressure, and my biggest thing right now is whenever one team gets a handle on the ball, they're not letting go of it. You have to wrestle it oh, out yeah. of their hands. It's 30, 45 seconds before you ever even see the damn thing again. And at that point, it becomes who can counterattack better because that's going to be the time when your opponent is most vulnerable. Butler did it better. Both of their counterattacks caused two goals, both in overtime, winning them two matches. Oh, yeah. And it's been the big difference between these two. Marquette have been solid about building out of their half, but sometimes I think you just got to send it a little bit quicker. Look for that long player up forward. Go for the 50-50 ball. 
and trust your teammates to win those because I think that's what's taking Butler over the edge right now. And honestly, with the way these teams are playing, I think it's about the only difference between them and Marquette. Yeah, I'm, and I really feel like Butler is just a more complete team at this point in time. You know, JFG, definitely the star for Marquette. Sonokar and Nito Burrito, still good players, and they do seem to play well together. Uh, but we're just seeing so many more plays from the entire roster of Butler. Jiggy and Kai, of course, lighting it up in games one and two. But then Sir Aaron there, after he heard my call to action in game three, he scored both of their goals, including that game winner there. And he really stepped up and made the plays when his team needed him to. Now Butler on match point. Marquette backs against the wall. Are they going to be able to win these last two and turn this series back in their favor? This is a tough one for them, right? You're trying to adapt against a team that plays almost exactly like you. These two teams have been having the same strengths. They've had yeah. the same weaknesses. They've played at the same speed. They've passed at the same speed. They've gone for the same passes, right? They've gone for the same plays. There's just the difference of who's actually connecting their shots right now. And right now, it's all Butler. So if I'm Marquette, I'm thinking, right, we're having trouble in this game. We're having trouble creating opportunities for ourselves, but so we're Butler. We're having opportunities scoring those for ourselves, but so we're Butler. So what yeah. happens when you try and shift the way you play entirely into something more attacking? I think you just start messing up more. I think you start letting in more goals from Butler. So for Marquette, it's just do more of the same, but, you know, yeah. do it better. And that hurts to hear but you got beaten two <laughs> ot's in a row the better, difference can't be head. that large <laughs> yeah i mean i agree i agree with pretty much everything you said i really feel like what it is for marquette is the confidence i feel like they are very good at this defensive play style they play it well you know almost similar to delaware playing that kind of counter-attack style that we saw from delaware last year um building slowly out of their half playing for the ball control they do you know I, but I think you're right. I think when it gets to those last minutes and they're still tied, they lose their game plan. You know, they kind of lose focus, um, especially in overtime. They lose focus. Uh, and I think if they can have that confidence in their plan, if they can stick to their game plan, if they can stick to their goals, they play it really well. And I think we're going to see them, you know, take some games here because this has been a very close series, you know, every game in overtime. So Marquette, They've been right there in these games, and it can still go either way. I'm really excited to see how this one shakes out. And you know what's crazy is, I mean, you, you say right there, they're not sticking to their game plan enough. I feel like they're sticking to their game plan too much. Mm, I feel like okay. it's kind of the opposite, right? Okay. Marquette only want to build out of their half. They only want to play really slow possession play, defensive, and then build out, go for an attack. And they're missing a lot of the opportunities that Butler are leaving hanging. Butler are doing the same thing, right? Building out of their half, getting possession. But when they get possession in the attacking half, it's often with two to three people actively going for the ball. There's opportunities there for Marquette to move faster, go for a heavy counterattack, and try and play off that that I don't think are getting taken advantage of, especially the later we get into the game. Because yeah. when overtime hits is when the difference hits between these two teams, right? You know, the true colors always come out in OT. And for Butler... What, it, what that's meant for them so far has just meant, okay, you know what? We're going to go for these now, right? We want this first goal. They're playing to score, and Marquette are playing to not get scored on. And honestly, I feel like I'm really liking the former, given how these two teams are playing. We're getting a sub in, though, for one of the players here. We'll get to find out what that is in just a moment. We're ready for the next match. Tell the players to go, go ahead. Let's get into match point between Butler and Marquette. Yeah, we are going to be seeing Opa subbing in for the side of Marquette in place of Son of Car. We did see Son of Car making some plays, but it seems like he was having some technical difficulties there. So, unfortunately, going to have to swap out. But maybe this will make a difference for this Marquette squad, who is on the back of two losses here, down 2-1 in this series, facing a loss oh in their first set. And Jiggy does it again. How many times... Is this guy just going to style on him? I don't know, but he's had a lot of really fantastic goals so far today. I want him to keep it up, and that's what I'm talking about, going for those. I don't think we've seen Marquette go for it. It's a confident thing more than anything, right? Just have, have the guts, have the gusto to go for it. Oh, no, JFG from across the field evened it up. That is the most goals we've seen in 10 seconds today. 
Yeah, um, two goals in the first 10 seconds. We've certainly seen crazier things. Well, maybe not much crazier things, but uh, this is a very fun one so far. This game for Marquette is not going to go down without a fight. And a fight we shall receive. JFG trying to get that flip reset off the ceiling. Doesn't quite make it happen towards the ball there. Nito Burrito trying to center it up, but nothing doing there. Jiggy taking it right on out. He's not interested. Okay, well, already I'm liking this aggression from Marquette. Butler, they're trying to play it out, but Marquette is winning them in the midfield. And, you know, right as I say that, Butler finally wins one, takes it back the other way. Now back and forth it goes. We've gone back to smash ball. I see the ball, I smash the ball, and we're going back and forth up and down this field. Yeah, Butler looking to play it out of their own. Looking for a strong counterattack from Zero. And that's actually a pretty good opportunity. They can get the ball centered. They do. It's Kai. No, Jiggy on the open net. Plays it back post and gets it shut down by Nito Burrito, who's on one oh, of his own. Ooh. Both of these teams now stepping up the pace big time for game number four. But remember, it's all on the line here for Marquette right now. Still a little bit of a buffer for Butler, but that may not last long if Marquette can keep up this pace. A ball out in midfield. Good communication to keep it down by Nito. Unfortunately, just oh. intercepted Sir Aaron from the middle of the field. Did this you? had to be some sort of intercept. Nito, let's see, touch Didn't to the side. Oh, yeah, Sir Aaron was 100% ready for this one. Right oh. in between threads and needle. And 2-1 up go Butler. Yep, he was in the perfect position. Honestly, it was so hard for me to see there. I thought JFG did an own goal that just got attributed to Sir Aaron. But no, Sir Aaron makes an incredible play there. All power to him and all power to Butler, who are now up 2-1. Two three and a half minutes to go. But as we say... A one score lead really no lead at all we already saw two goals in the span of 10 seconds in this game anything can happen in the crazy upside down world of rocket league Upa with the ball here coming up the sideline sir aaron goes for the challenge but Upa actually wins that one out kai gonna end up getting the touch back and forth goes marquette looking to build this one. Oh my goodness jfg you had a wide open net there and he just missed it well, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, man. Marquette now not playing either of those, but they can still score a goal. With three minutes on the clock, there's so much time for them to actually do this. But I don't think it comes from building out of their half. Butler have gotten so comfortable playing against that. They just need to find their opportunity. Look for an intercept here. The passes haven't been perfect. There's a chance for you to come in every once in a while. Try and outplay somebody 1v1. Sir, and have a good shot, though, off the backboard. There's no one there to really finish it. Jiggy turns around in hopes of getting a piece of the ball. Instead, oh. just leaves it for Kai, who's across oh, center. The sure for the shot. No, it's wide. Another one here. And you can tell how low Marquette are right now on boost. They're struggling to get to these balls, but somehow Nito Brio has managed it. He's out. He's underneath it. And Opa gives them the relief they need and a shot on net that Jiggy's got to save. Big hit. He tried to actually play it back into the middle there, but Jiggy, Jiggy is so good. Oh my goodness. He almost goes all the way down the field with that one. Opa, though, comes back around. He says, you know what? I can do that too. I'm not going to let you score for free. And he stops the bleeding there, but still Marquette down a goal. They're looking to set it up over the middle here. Nito Burrito, if he was in a better position, had a slightly different angle. That could have been a goal there, but alas, it was not meant to be. Now Kai coming down the field here. He's going to get stopped by JFG back and forth. This ball goes. And these 50-50 balls, I love seeing the aggression from both teams. The confidence going after so many of these, really not letting any plays be made for free so far today. No, 2-1 to one though, and 2-1 to one in scoreline as well. Butler just one game away from tailing this one out. They want a third goal. They want to put the nail on the coffin, but it's so difficult, right? Every time you move forward against Marquette, you're risking them getting one of those counterattacks off that they've been looking for for so long. And Opa's got one anyways. A clear ball up the left side. Cross into center. Kai's there for the save, though. So all the stuff from the Butler defender. And keeping that time in mind, they want to play a lot of these high. They want to play that ping pong game. They want to rip as much time off this clock as possible. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot today. Playing the clock can give you so much advantage we talked about marquette you know the way they panic in the last minute especially when they're down um they lose their game plan they lose focus they make more mistakes jiggy almost had a chance at a goal there extending the lead even further butler has marquette exactly where they want them right now because marquette just has not been able to stay focused in the clutch moments of these games Got one more chance to become so. 30 seconds. We've seen him even up the score. They just need one cool J. 
The Torreran and crew are not giving him any sort of breaks. This Butler squad looks completely renewed since last semester. And honestly, I'm loving it. Right at the core, we've seen these guys play before. But it just feels so much newer. It feels like there's so much more life put right into it. And already, just over the offseason, there's been a massive improvement for Marquette, though. I don't think oh, it's going to no. be enough, Cool J. They've got one more okay. shot here. It's dead center in the midfield. Let's okay. run there to lay it up okay. for Brito, but that's oh, the ground. That's touch. it, and that's Butler taking away the match. Three to one. Huge congratulations to the blue side. Yeah, three to one in the series in this particular game, of course. Two to one final score. Uh, honestly... I was about to talk about an MVP for that series for Butler. It's honestly hard for me to pick one. You know, I'm going to say Jiggy would eke it out by a bit, but it was really a big team effort from that squad up and down the roster. They all played incredibly well in that series. Yeah, and honestly, first of all, apologies for the camera. His camera got shut off somehow, but we'll get it back to you guys after a quick little break. And I got to I gotta say the same thing. I think Jiggy takes that one away. The shots, the saves, this guy was all over the field. I'm sure Severin was all up in the comms, a consistent player, solid captain all around. It's what you want from somebody who's keeping your whole team together. Everybody played pretty, pretty well today. Marquette weren't able to come out with the win. I think a little bit more grit to their play, a little bit more invested into their attacking side, though, and they'll get there. There's plenty more Rocket League, though. We're only halfway done. Canisius versus University of Colorado is coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. In just a moment, you won't want to miss it.
and gentlemen and welcome back to some more egfc rocket league action we are here with season two uh coming up next we've got kinesius college facing off against the university of colorado should be a fun match and i am joined here by meet and greek of unfortunately door had to go uh, away for a little while but meet and greek is going to be filling his shoes he's going to do a great job how you doing today man I'm doing great, and Dora is not far away. He's just hitting the buttons in the background, making sure the stream is going to go off without a hitch. And I'm very excited now for this matchup. We have Kanishis going up against the University of Colorado. Inter-conference battle, MAC versus Pac-12. Yeah. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens here. Uh, Kanishis, for those of you who don't remember, went all the way to the grand finals of the MAC championship last season when they yeah. fell 4-0 to Maris. Very epic showdown right there. I'm very excited to see what this new season brings for them. Maybe they're going to go on a little bit of a revenge tour. We'll find out today. Yeah, we will. Yeah, and this has kind of been our theme all day long. We've been seeing teams. It was a long off season. A lot of teams... Their seasons didn't end exactly the way they wanted them to. And Canisius, they're one of those teams. You know, they did have a good season getting all the way to those finals. But, you know, losing, getting second place has to be so heartbreaking for them. So I'm sure they worked hard over this summer to get better and come back here for season two. Come back stronger than ever. So, of course, we are going to be seeing Canisius in the blue and Colorado in the red here as we get underway for game one. Yeah, I want to see exactly what these teams do. It's the best of five, so oh. plenty of time for anyone 
to, to get the early opportunity. Deco is going to get up, though, to keep this out of play as Flo is going to transition onto the offense. Yeah, back and forth we go. Colorado looking for an opportunity. Flo, Trixon, and Deco. These faces are ready to go for this game today. Now Flo coming up the sideline. Humble Potato. He is a humble potato indeed. I remember him. He was one of my favorites um, just because of that incredible <laughs> username. Uh, he was not able to find the shot that time because, of course, he is just a humble potato. Oh, and, oh no! no! Deco. Oh no! You know what's you know what's rough is I was looking at humble potato, and they had full boost in the tank. There is no excuse. You just no gotta excuse. get up for that shot earlier. Unfortunately, they're caught off guard. And Deco with their early strike for Colorado. Is there oh, a lead? Here comes no. another shot on it. Bar down and away, and the oh, save comes so out. Lucky. Kanish just got so lucky right there. They were about to go down 0-2 a minute into the game, but just barely that ball did not bounce into the goal. Oh, they were hanging by a thread, but now I'm stuffed. Yeah, I'd say that's a bit of an understatement. I'd say he's hot stuff after that shot. Yeah, well, let's All take right a little off. bit of a rewind. Take a look at that, and you, need to say, you say Deco going up for the shot as well, but kind of took the defense out of it for example because they thought he was going to hit it instead he misses and whiffs and it goes right in it does yeah i mean and that's you love to see it <laughs> you love to see it <laughs> for Kanisha's from the jaws of defeat into the hands of victory right there <laughs> absolutely great play evened up the score now three and a half minutes to go flow for colorado he's not flowing i'm done what well, let's take a look at this here. I love the flow that Colorado is bringing to its offense. You're seeing them pass the ball to each other, but as soon, and as soon as Canisius takes possession, they just zip it right down the field. The defense is nowhere to be seen. That's because they're pushed up way too much. They get capitalized upon really quickly. And now they're left thinking, well, we did so much on offense, but our defense is lacking. Yeah. I, really, it looks to me like the rotations for Colorado a little bit too slow so far. Two long-range goals for Canisius. And Canisius, I mean, they're sitting pretty. 2-1. It feels like they can score whenever they want to. Glixie going to go up for that ball, up and over the goal. He's not quite going to hit it there. Low coming in. Oh, that was it off the net. top bar. Oh, Trixon just off target. Deco putting it goalwards, but I'm stuffed is indeed there to stuff that shot and he's been all over the, the field today. Reset. Whoa. Oh. oh some I'm loving nice. this energy. Yeah. And the thing is though, Colorado, I don't want to hate on you guys, but you should have scored in that last 30 seconds. Yeah. So many wasted opportunities and hopefully for their sake it doesn't come back to bite them unless the score line stays as it is for the rest of game one, but I think they're gonna have more opportunities. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of opportunities here as these teams have come here ready to do battle. And this is what I love to see, this kind of action in the EGF Rocket League. So much fun. Two minutes left to go. One goal lead, which as we say, is no lead at all. Anything can happen in the world of Rocket League. It's so fast. We've seen two goals in the span of 10 seconds already today. Will we see something crazier happen? Flo is bringing it down the field. A nice little dribble pass over the middle. Oh, pass! What a pass and what a shot. This looks like it's straight out of a textbook. Look at this pass from Flo. Getting the defense all jumbled up. Deco there to hit it home. And again, the offense from Colorado, fantastic. So much fun. Both of these teams are putting on a showcase on offense already. Uh, we really haven't seen the high scoring game so far, but these ones are have these guys are having a lot of fun with this one. You can really feel, you can feel the energy when they're having so much fun. Deco with a double tap off the backboard. Great job setting himself up there for the score. And this is what Deco is recognizing is that Canisius, they're get they're too slow to getting up for the ball. And they're letting the ball not only get up in the dangerous territory, they're letting it bounce off their own backboard. If you're Canisius, you see the ball on your backboard, you hit that away immediately. Letting it bounce back towards the offenders is the absolute 
worst thing you can commit in Rocket League. You cannot allow that to happen. Hopefully they can fix it here as Potato! Almost getting a stunner in for himself instead. Stays out of the net. So I mean what we're seeing here, Colorado scored first, then Kanisha scored two, unanswered, then Colorado scored two unanswered. So I'm predicting here, Kanisha, they're about to put some goals on the board. I think get two more. I think that's what's going to happen next. We'll have to see, though. That's certainly what they're hoping. I'm Stuff is trying to show that he is indeed Stuff because he hasn't been looking like hot stuff ever since those two shots early on. 30 seconds left to go, and Colorado seems to be in full control of this ball right now. Yeah, you can easily tell the momentum is really all in Colorado's favor. I mean, you can see in their offensive possession as well, they just went for a pinch shot. Didn't go exactly how they planned it, but it's the confidence that they're exuding right now is just unparalleled compared to what Canisius is doing. Canisius looking towards game two. If they can't tie it up here, they're going to have to figure out a way to get back at Colorado. Yeah, they definitely are. Overtime ticking down. They have to keep this ball up. There is still a chance for the last second shot, but unfortunately not going to be able to get the touch. Colorado makes it happen here in game one, but it was no cakewalk for them. Canisius and Colorado both playing very well on that one, uh, but... I mean, Colorado just had so much momentum. Really, over those last two, three minutes, they seemed to be in full control of that match. They really did, but that's not to say that Canisius cannot bring it back. What I saw from them was a very, very solid defense, and that's going to be yeah. kind of the cornerstone for them. The only problem with that solid defense, like, they were doing great with the rotations. It's just that backboard. That backboard is, like, their main thing, and if I could call out on all of these collegiate teams that they're playing, they, almost all of them have some little bit of concern with their backboard play. And bit. if they're able, if they're able to fix that, I think they eliminate a lot of possession, a lot of plays that Colorado has been able to make on them. It'll be a much tighter game. It would actually probably more go in their favor because two to three score line is still pretty tight. Could have easily gone their way if they had a couple more chances. So if Kanishas can uh, reel that back in. I think they have a really solid chance here in game two. Yeah, I'd say even more than a solid chance, but we'll have to see how it goes down here. We won't have to wait very long to get our questions answered because here we go into game two. And of course, Canisius looking to take a game back after losing game one, three to two, very close scoreline, but it was a back and forth game with both teams looking dominant at different points. I'm Stuff looking to bring some of his stuff back but Deco not having any of his stuff. He's actually going to knock it out and then demo Glixy for good measure. 30 seconds in and so far we're already getting some fun action, but no scoring yet. Scoring yet, but both teams playing it very carefully here. A double commit could open up some opportunities for Canisius on the other side, but they're not too quick to take possession. You can tell because they're all boost starved. But maybe they're going to hold on to something here. Here comes Potato. Can't get it past Flav. Oh. Okay, the ball's so still in play. Okay. All right. All right. I'm Stuff. He's in Stuff. He's trying to do it. Can he do it? He's, you know, two goals in game one, but just not finding the angles just yet. Really been struggling for the past, you know, four minutes of game. If you include, you know, the last three of that first game. It's really been very difficult for this Kanisha squad. So we'll see if they can find their flow. We're waiting for it. We're wanting to see it. A Humble Potato with a demo. That's huge. 3v2 attack. I'm stuff pushing forward. Humble Potato, Glixy both over the middle of the field. Can they get the setup they need? Deco with a clearance out into the midfield. Trixon with a demo of his own. They're coming back the other way. Remember, we are still scoreless. The next goal will bring a go ahead, getting that early lead. Well, I mean, at this point, not even early, and there it is, Flo. Flows right on through, just drops that one in there. A little bit of a splash. And if you're looking at this play, you might be thinking, this could have been a culmination of all of Colorado's offense here, but really, it was a mistake on defense that they were able to capitalize, because if you looked at the first two minutes of this game, it was mostly Canisius holding possession but not putting anything really on target. And 
I think that goes to show how calm and patient the Colorado offense was to make a play. Look at this bump from Flav wow. opening up the net. That is so offensively minded. I love it. Yeah, we really love to see those types of plays. The demo goals, knocking the goalie out. You know, it's part of the game, but it's so hard to get those set up sometimes. And Colorado there, really, that's kind of a weird flex moment, but they made it happen. 2-0 now, about halfway through this game, too. And Colorado has continued their dominance from game one. Well, from the end of game one. Yeah, from the end of game one, Trixton doing a great job. You can see... The little things here and there that Colorado is doing. Trixon not only able to get that ball to bounce straight down in front of the net. Luckily, though, Kanisha's wisened up a little bit from game one. They've improved upon their backboard defense, but they're still down by two goals. It could be three. Luckily, they're able to keep this one away as they hope to transition onto the offense now. Yeah, looking for... Any kind of opportunities is Canisius right now, but they're just not finding them, and they're starting to fall apart defensively as well as Deco. A great assist over to Trixon there. You see, Canisius, they didn't even get a touch on that ball until it was already in the net. It's unfortunate, but you can chop that up to just simple miscommunication. You can see the defense all jumbled up together. There wasn't really no one standing out from the crowd no one saying hey i got this i'm gonna go for it everyone else rotate back on defense and it led to unfortunately a mismatched play yeah well these things happen you know the thing is colorado they're happy they get to have this win Canisius, you know, they wanted to come out day one. They wanted to make a statement. They wanted to show their strength here early on in the season. So far, they haven't been able to do that. Now, there's still a lot of Rocket League left to be played. A minute and a half in this one, and at least five minutes more in game three. But, you know, I think they've got a lot of stuff that they can work on here. Clearly, at this point, just falling apart in this best of five here in game two, it has been all Colorado all the time. It's unfortunate there, but I can already see a couple of mistakes. Humble Potato all the way downfield. The ball's in your half, and you're getting boosted. It's just decisions here and there that you make for your team. And they have lasting impacts on the play. Let's see if Canisius can bring something back here. Last minute of gameplay. Maybe you're not going for the win here in game two. But you're going for that momentum boost going into game three, realizing you have to reverse sweep. And it's looking more and more like that will be the case as Trixon throws another one. That's a hat trick for them with a minute to go in this game. Yeah, Colorado I mean, looking tough. I don't know what else to say. Colorado. That game one looked close. Yeah, back and forth. Both teams showed some strength. But Colorado here in game two has just said, you know what? This is our series. You guys don't even have a chance. I don't even know what that was in game one. And now Canisius, they're just kind of taking it. They really haven't been able to fight back at all. And we'll have to see here as the onslaught continues from Colorado as Deco was given full reign to air dribble that. Luckily... For Canisius, they're able to stop him. But there's so much space given to Colorado. They're going to ride this momentum into game three if Canisius doesn't stop it here. All right. Well, 10 seconds left. Five goals in 10 seconds, I suppose, is possible. But I think this one's all over but the crying for Canisius. Colorado, they're going to be crying tears of joy. Well, maybe not just yet. They're going to be looking towards finishing out this series in Game 3. But, man, 2-0 up. Absolutely great stuff from them. A hat trick from Trixon. Incredible. I mean, what else is there to say? Well, luckily, I have a lot to say. <laughs> so, I think this game could have gone drastically differently. If Canisius was able to settle some goals early on, they had multiple shot attempts while the mm. game was scoreless that they weren't able to put on target. They had shots. Yeah. 
but they their placement was off and it's unfortunate because they were great opportunities to score that ended up i feel like changing the entirety of this game if they were able to score early on it would have been much tighter they probably could have walked out with a win instead they let colorado take control and once colorado scored two goals it was effectively over they were extending too much and they were making too many defensive mistakes where if you're Canisius, you have to kind of settle yourself down for a little bit and just yeah. say, all right, now they're in the reverse sweep territory. They have to really kick back and get Colorado's number. I think they can do it. If game one served any purpose, it showed me that Canisius can hang. And yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that they can bring this series back, but they have to come in and make the shots where it counts. If they're able to do this in game three, they can get this one win here. I think that's more than enough proof for themselves because Rocket League is such a mental game that if they have the confidence, they can get it done. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, honestly. Um, Canisius, the only thing that really worries me is, you know, they go down 0-2. That happens a lot in the world of Rocket League. If you're telling me that Canisius, every time they go down 0-2, they're just out, that's it? No chance of a comeback? Prospects don't look good for their season. Uh, we are going to see a sub coming in for Canisius. Lord Bapo is now in. Actually, a sub for the side of Colorado, and the sub for Colorado sub working scores. out well. <laughs> Starvin gets the goal there another very quick goal and i'm just looking at the canisius defense on the play and again just hesitating a little too much stuck on the ground no one going for the stop and allows the shot on nez deco is gonna play with the opportunity oh, oh, again whoa. and that one's gonna just bounce in flav is there to seal the deal two goal lead and University of Colorado, hey, they have to be feeling pretty good 15 seconds into game three. And it's looking more and more like they're going to get this sweep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Colorado looking sus. I feel like they're not doing their tasks, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so far, incredible stuff from them. And they are showing no signs of slowing down. Two goals within the first 20 seconds. Make it three in the first 30. Starvin. He is making a statement here coming up big for Colorado here in game three. And, yeah, the you know, super sub. Two goals. Oh, man. That's pretty good. That's oh, pretty man. good. We'll have to see here. Canisius hasn't had any opportunities on offense. I want to see what they're going to be able to bring to the table here in game three before I make any conclusions about where this game is going. But right now, Colorado is doing a fantastic job of keeping this ball on the blue half. They're really stagnating that offensive capability of Canisius. Okay, back and forth. Kanisha seems to have slowed down Colorado for the time being, but Colorado is still living in Kanisha's half. It feels like they could score at will at any moment. They're setting up plays constantly, time after time. Deco putting it off the backboard. Is his team there to follow up? No, flow a little bit too high on that one. Didn't quite get the angle, but Starvin, he's already scored a couple. He's already got some big style points, but that time not gonna work out. Right? These teams just slowing down the pace. Back and forth we go. And, you know, I almost wonder... It feels like Kanisha's just playing scared now. They just don't want to do... I mean, I get it. The way Colorado's been scoring, I'd be scared too. But there we go. A humble to potato bringing it down. Oh, oh. Not, not well, quite going to work out that time. Lord Bapo does get the demo, though. But... <laughs> Flo and Starvin aren't even slowing down. A 2v3 rush attack. They almost get the score. Lord Bapo is going to get the save there, but 3-0 Colorado in full control. Oh, here's an opportunity that has to go in. Potato throwing it down when they need him. Most Canisius College on the board. Down only by two now. Yeah, only two. Um, we saw a 2-0 lead was very strong against them last game. So, you know, I don't know. Hopefully this gets them going. I want to see Canisius make this a series. I want to see that Canisius squad that we saw last year. They were a solid team. And it seems like over this break, 
they haven't really worked as much as some of these other squads. We'll have to see if they can get it done. Another shot from the super sub goes off target. The deflection coming through. Another shot towards the net. But the defense there for Colorado, they know they just have to keep this two goal lead here for the next two minutes and 30 seconds and they'll walk away with a clean sweep. Kanisha's fighting right now to make this a series, but they're yeah. going up for those defensive plays off the backboard. They're, they're making the changes mid game three. And I think it's a testament to their strength. If they can keep this up, let's see if they can tie it. Yeah, I for sure. I always love to see these teams show their heart, show their strength. Mental strength is so important. I think it's more than half the battle in the world of esports is just being there mentally. So difficult, especially after such a demoralizing game two loss. But that's what's so great about Rocket League. That was five minutes. You know, you know we got another in five minutes. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. All right. Well, now it's 3-1. You know, not doing the best here either, but we are still going to fight. We're not out of this yet. We're not going to let you take this win for free. You've got to earn it from us because no wins are free in the EGFC. And here we go. 90 seconds left to go. Colorado coming down the pitch. Starvin into the corner, playing it over the middle. Nothing doing there. Lord Bappo now into the corner, hit on his own. Flo, oh, he's not quite able to get the hit he's looking for, but Digo comes in to save him in the back there. I'm stuff now. Finally, some pressure here from Canisius, but not quite enough. I would have liked to see I'm stuff set up his teammates over the middle there. Seemed like he was trying to go for a solo style play, and that's not going to work against this incredible Colorado defense. And it really feels like Canisius is on a cooking show, but they started the main dish too late, and they're going to have to serve it to the judges uncooked because they're really bringing the heat now, but it might just not have they might not have enough time there's 43 seconds left they need two goals well we've seen two goals in 10 seconds on multiple occasions today and i'm stuff is now going on a demolition derby but it's still not going to be enough and it actually might leave his team overextended starve and flow all three oh members. my goodness the incredible play right there one two three for the fourth goal from Dico. Wow, take a look at that, folks. That is stellar communication. Everyone there for each other on the play. And goodness gracious, it's hard to beat that. Colorado yeah. looking great. Yeah, Colorado already in mid-season form here on day one. They were a good squad last year, and it seems they've only gotten better. Deco, what are you doing, man? This is unparalleled, and I'm going to say that. I bet Colorado plays a whole lot of Rocket League together. They don't just wait for the season to begin, folks. This is a team that looks very in tune. And I'm very excited to see what comes next from them because this could be a contender for being one of the top teams here in EGFC. And we'll have to see what the future weeks bring. As the clock hits zero, it's now mathematically impossible for Kanishas to come back. They will be get they will be getting swept here by the University of Colorado in their first match of the season. We'll have to wish them good luck going forward and see if they can bring it back. Yeah. Wishing both of these teams good luck. Obviously, not the start that Canisius was looking for. I, you know, kind of an understatement to say that, to say the least. But Colorado coming out, really, in my opinion, putting the league on notice. They want everyone to know they've been putting in the work and they're here to play. And you better be worried if you see Colorado on your schedule next week. And we know there's some really great teams here in the EGFC. One that comes into my mind in particular is UTA, University of Texas, Arlington. I believe they won the whole thing last season. Very talented as well. I'd love to see what would happen if they face this Colorado squad. I bet you that would be a very, very close series. But right now, if you're Canisius, unfortunate, take a loss. That's okay. What's great is that you have so many more matches ahead of you that you can absorb this loss into your season just it could just be a game one uneasiness that's totally fine 
He's got to look forward to the next week. And after Colorado, though, yeah. this is a fantastic way to start things off. Like, wow, this is a yeah. statement. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, Cool J. This is a statement game from them. They have come out just showing everyone who's boss. And I'm excited to see what they do next week. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to Colorado all season long, um, especially from Deco. He was making plays up and down the field. Uh, you know, Flo played incredibly well also, but Deco is going to be my MVP of that match, honestly. Oh, I would have to say Deco as well. I saw him create some fantastic plays off the backboard. I think that's really big for someone to recognize that Canisius wasn't going up for those saves to be able to just see that, adapt, and make the play. Deco's my MVP as well. Yep, yeah, well, it was a bit of a one-sided affair, but still some fun Rocket League action there between Canisius and Colorado. Sorry to you, Canisius fans, but of course we want to thank you for coming out. But... The EGF action does not stop, at least for a little bit longer. We've got St. John's University facing off against Villanova coming up next. Don't go away.
Ladies and gentlemen, we've got more EGFC Season 2 Rocket League action coming at you. As promised before the break, we've got St. John's facing off against Villanova, and this one is primed to be a great matchup. Yeah, cool, Jay. We have a battle in the Big East, and again, like, this is so awesome, the Big East part of EGFC. Like, what mm, more can you ask for as a UConn alum? This makes my this makes my heart really happy. And you know I would be super biased if I was casting the Yukon match earlier tonight on the other EGF stream, but that didn't happen, of course. They couldn't allow that. Yeah. But I'll make gotta sure it happens things, next time. Gotta keep things <laughs> clean on this stream. We definitely didn't let Gore <laughs> cast Florida State. That didn't happen. <laughs> we'll have to oh, see what man. happens here. But yeah, St. John's going to be in the blue, Villanova in the orange. This is going to be a very fantastic matchup. And like, again, like what I like... I like some history yeah. between the teams that are playing, but we don't have history here for the Big East, at least in the EGFC. So we'll have to see these teams make it as they come into their inaugural season here. And both all these players, they're not even going to wait for us to talk. We're just going to get right in this game. Of course, our folks at home are waiting to watch these games happen. Let's get to a fresh five minutes on the clock in this best of five. Let's get it going. Yeah, my key for this game, Villanova, they're, they were a good team last year. They've brought their entire starting roster back. I'm a horse, Riles, and Popcorn were all on this team last season, and they had some pretty great results. They weren't able to put it together at the end of the season, but they've had a whole offseason to work on their game, to work on their comms. They aren't worrying about bringing in any new players, so it should be pretty fun to watch. We'll see how well they do. Meanwhile, on the St. John's side, I do remember Justin Time, uh, but aside from that, I think they have some pretty new players here. So we'll see. Uh, St. John's also struggled a bit last season. They had some good moments. They had some bad moments. We'll see if they can put things together here this season as we continue on. We've got, we're already about a minute into this match, and so far it's been you know, pretty back and forth. The ball control has been pretty even, so... So far, no scoring. We haven't really seen any team get an edge just yet. So characteristic of every game one, of every series, almost every series that I've been lucky to cast is no one's trying to make that first mistake and give the edge to their opponent. But we'll have to see here as an opportunity awakes for Riles, but unable to do anything with that one. Oh, but there we go. The demo attack coming in here from Otto oh, okay, Horst, hold on. And he just sneaks it in over the top of the defender. Great play from him. It looks like I'm a horse. Just got a tiniest bump over Glaze Donuts, but it looked like the bump didn't even factor into the play. Glaze Donuts just too slow to the ball. Villanova takes the early lead here in game one. Yeah, and you know, that's the key here. It really is a game of inches. In Rocket League, the ball bouncing in front of the oh, goal. Oh, no. Popcorn puts it in. This is really rough. I'm just looking from the perspective of just in time and glazed donuts and just an unfortunate touch right there when you really want to clear that ball to the side, not let it just bounce in the center. Just open season for Villanova. As they take the two goal lead. Indeed. Yeah, 2 0 now. And Villanova, they're sitting pretty. St. John's, they've got to find a way to get something going because they had a tough season last year and they don't want to start off on the wrong foot again. But Villanova, they are here with a vengeance and they are ready to show. Last season didn't end the way they wanted to, but this year is going to go their way. Riles fires at Gold's words. Just in time is just in time there. But it will he be consistently because Nova is consistently getting these insane attack runs. Well, it's because right now, from what I'm seeing, St. John's is playing a lot of reactionary Rocket League where they're waiting for Villanova to take a shot or a hit before they go for the ball. No, if this ball is up in the air, you have to go for these 50-50s. That's how you're going to get the ball out of your zone. Instead, they're boost starved. Barely able to clear the ball out of their own net before Villanova just retakes possession as Popcorn turns around with the full boost. You can see it happen live on your screens, folks. It's just unfortunate for St. John's because they're so ready to get on offense, but they just can't. Yeah, it's just been so difficult for them. Going up and down the field, St. John's, you know, a lot of times it's difficult for them to get out of their own half. 
we saw a lot of similar things from them last season. Um, not always the worst on the defensive side. Obviously, today they are really getting punished by this Villanova team. But, you know, it, when they were able to get control of the ball, often they would just hit it into midfield and then... You know, the other team would just hit it right on back and they were back to square one. They struggled with that for much of the season. And right here, another thing that I'm looking at, St. John's, they're getting the clears, but they're not clearing it to their teammates. Instead, they're just booming it downfield. I need to see more directed passes oh, here. And unfortunate, man. because the defense on St. John's, they went up for that ball first, but no contact was made. Yeah. Lyles just was just giving that a silver platter. He's gonna hit that one in every time. Yeah, Riles takes those every day of the week. He is eating today, and he has been playing incredibly well for his team, alongside his entire oh, squad. No. Oh, and the own goal! Great stuff there from Villanova, and this is just getting really difficult for St. John's unfortunate there but you can't really blame primal for that one just trying to get in front of the ball whatever you can do but when your entire defense goes for the ball and no one's able to make contact that's a little bit concerning and if you're st john's now you have to slow things down it's okay it's only game one you have ample opportunity to bring this back maybe not in this game but going forward in game two you cannot let this slip away and give villanova all the momentum yeah, one minute remaining, four to zero right now for Villanova. And they're showing no signs of slowing down. Glazed Donuts looking to glaze this ball on its way to the goal, but nothing gonna happen this time. Just in time, comes in trying to set things up, but look at his teammates, Primal and Donuts, both running the other way while just in time's trying to set stuff up. It just feels like this team is just out of sync. And I think that is the indication rather that their communication isn't lined up you're absolutely correct but right now they're, they're giving so much time for villanova that ball was in their blue corner for like five seconds but no defenders went up to make the challenge instead they allowed the pass to come through and it's that reactionary rocker league what i talked about 15 seconds into this game and it's apparent in the last 15 seconds of game one as well yeah I mean, Villanova just going up for winning every single 50-50. Just incredible stuff. Total domination all across the field right now. They're getting shot after shot after shot. Did did St. John's even have a shot on goal? I don't, I don't even... I feel like they didn't. They had two just, shots on goal. They had two shots on goal? Okay. But incredible stuff from, incredible stuff from Villanova there. 5-0, exactly how they wanted this one to go. Exactly. And if you take a look again, St. John's two shots on goal, Villanova 14. Wow. Very drastic in terms of Quick comparing maths. the offense. <laughs> I mean, I know how to do math. So we're, oh, I, I, I got you situated on that front for this evening. But looking forward here to game two, as I'm quickly scribbling in my notebook, what can St. John's University do to turn that around? You gotta stop playing reactionary Rocket League. You gotta be proactive, St. John's. If you, if y'all are hearing me on this, yeah, but you gotta the go for those is, 50/50s. You gotta do everything. Question is how? How? how oh, you... it's confidence. Hundred percent confidence. If they can come out here in game two, just more confidence, they can do it. Absolutely. All right, so you heard it here first. St. John's, confidence. Go up for those 50-50 balls, and you'd be surprised. You probably win about 50% of them. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, you're going to see how it goes. I think... I, got I think quick math on the EGF stream here today. <laughs> well, here's, here's something to think about. I, I believe that mental mistakes in Rocket League are so much more costly than mechanical mistakes. So if you go for a 50-50 and you miss, that's much better than not going for it at all because yeah. it forces your opponent to think about how they're going to make contact with the ball. 
if you give them an open shot, they don't have to worry about hitting it in a certain direction or worrying about getting it past the defense. But the yeah. moment you put yourself into the equation, it makes it much more difficult for them. Yeah, just so, so difficult. Um, and the really the thing is, can't give anything away for free. When you see these uncontested balls, it's just, it's free. It's really free. I'm a horse, Riles Popcorn. They will take these all day long. They don't really have to use up a lot to do it. But when you see St. John's going after this, when you see them forcing Villanova to make plays, you know, it gets more difficult. And I'm not sure if it would make the difference in this series, but it would definitely make a difference in the mentality for these St. John's players. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so far here in game two, it is still all tied up. No scoring yet. But as we saw before, once Villanova gets that first goal in, the floodgates open and they just come rushing on in. Yeah, and if you're St. John's, I've seen it already. They've sent all three of their players on offense. Luckily, they haven't been capitalized upon that quite yet, but they just have to be careful. Do not overextend. Villanova will capitalize. That could have been a fantastic shot. Opportunity gone by could have spelled disaster for Villanova. Instead, they breathe a sigh of relief. But St. John's still on the offense. Yeah, I mean, that is the one pro here. And actually, it's all tied up. We could see St. John's take the lead. And that's the other beauty about Rocket League. Yeah, game one was 5-0, but guess what? Now it's 0-0. It's a new game, a new five minutes. Anything can happen. And they are going for it right here. St. John's are actually having a bit of a relentless attack, but they may have overextended a bit. Blaze Donut's going to get that demo to try and slow their attack, and it does work out for the time being. Forced to retreat is I'm a horse, but Popcorn coming right in, playing it over the middle. Is someone there to follow up? Ross is there, but he just misses the aerial. A rare misstep from this Nova squad. It almost paid for it. I'm a horse at the last second gets the stop. And this could have been a fantastic opportunity. Unlucky for Glazed Donuts as both defenders there in net to make the stop. I don't think that ball was going to go in no matter where you placed it. And here's another chance as everyone here oh. on the offense. Justin Time was the last man back. Yeah, that could be really dangerous. He missed that there. Primal is able to get a touch on it, and that's good. As we're under two minutes, we are still scoreless here. And, you know, we are seeing St. John's. They are filling our goals. There are keys to the game two here. They are playing aggressive. They're not giving away anything for free. You know, it still looks, you know, a little messy sometimes, but it looks so much better. They are making Villanova work hard for their points here. And so far, Villanova hasn't been able to find anything. Yeah, and I'm just really concerned because we're seeing a lot of double commits on the side of St. John's. Now, luckily, they keep the third man back in a very good position to make up for that. But I want to see more spacing between them on the offense, and they can't let that ball bounce off the backboard, create second oh. chance opportunities oh, no. for Villanova. Popcorn. This ball's going to go in. It doesn't. Villanova had so many chances there, and you know what, Villanova? If you think you deserve to be dominating this series, you should have scored right there. You had so many chances, and you didn't get it in. And now, oh my goodness, no way. Oh, no. Oh. Never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> Primal. Riles, he heard Couldn't me talking get about there. he should have made that shot. And he said, you know what? I can make any shot I want. He just makes it from all the way across the pitch, man. Absolutely untouchable. So unfortunate because Primal was the last one back. And there was, that was what we were talking about earlier. Don't overextend the offense. And they did just that. Now Villanova, oh, far down horse, throwing it into the mix. Two goal lead. Villanova all of a sudden taking command. Yep, taking command. And this is what they do. Same thing happened in game one. It took a little while to get that score going. This time took a little bit longer, but as soon as it did, Villanova just pours on the goals, opening the floodgates, and they're doing an incredible job here. 30 seconds left to go. The way St. John's has played offensively, I don't see them making this comeback here. I did like what they showed in game two here, but it seems like it might not have been enough. We'll have to see here, 14 seconds left. I mean, it's going to be very tall order to score two goals in the last 10 seconds when this ball is stuck in your own corner just in time trying to 
get this one away a last second chance here comes glazed donuts that's gonna be it though they're gonna drop game oh. two villanova yeah. coming out of nowhere to steal this one away and now on the cusp of sweeping st john's well i'm not sure i would say out of nowhere we knew villanova favorite coming into this game but really we weren't sure how much of a favorite here and now we're seeing Villanova is leaving no doubt in our minds after these first two games it's going to be very difficult here in game three we'll have to see how it goes but St. John's they definitely have their work cut out for them yeah no it's gonna be very tough but I, I thought game two was an excellent showing from St. John's it's unfortunate that they were dropped in the last couple 30 seconds. And it's not a good look, but it proves to us that they can hang here. Going yeah. to game three, I think my money is on Villanova, but I'm not counting out St. John's quite yet. Yeah, you know what I want to see here, really? I want to see St. John's continue playing the conference. I, you know not sure they can win this series <laughs> it's really villanova is an incredibly good team but st john's they had the whole off season to work and improve and get better and come back and they've got a big season here it's not just this one game this is not the start they wanted you know that happens it's okay they got to move on move forward villanova they're gonna be eaten they are looking even better than last year and last year they already looked incredible another one of the teams to look out for it seems like we have so many and this is what's so great about our egf as the seasons go on the teams get better and you have more threats to worry about that just doesn't it just keeps on going the gift that keeps on giving we're gonna have even more fun egf esports action here comes a great opportunity here glazed donuts get up and put a shot on yes but saved from horse and already game three, we're watching it happen. It's a much faster pace than game two. Yep, the demo there from St. John's, it does seem to be faster paced in terms of the movement. There's not as much slow building from either side, but still no scoring. Just like the other two, we are already more than a minute in and no one has gotten on the board. And I wonder what it is about this Villanova squad. Is it this specific matchup? But it seems like they just don't score early. And I feel like that's something we saw them do last year. But so far in this series, they've really struggled with that. I'm going to put you on hold for a second because we just saw oh, the ball. Oh, Never mind. Oh. They just redeemed themselves. I was about to say, St. John's had a ball in front of the Nolan net. And no one was there to hit it in. But Glazed Donut, fantastic yeah. snipe from downtown. I think after that one, we're going to see Popcorn floating outside the spaceship. I'm not sure if he's the imposter or not, but he definitely dropped the ball there. The rotations were not in, and St. John's is leading. I'm a horse. He's not dropping the ball. He's back to make the play, but St. John's almost had another big cross-field goal. We'll see if things turn around here on the defensive half. I mean, two and, and things, a half minutes to go. Now it's starting to slow to down. Well, you will we'll see here, St. John's, they have a perfect opportunity to secure game three. They just have to hold on. Now, if history has shown us anything, it's that Villanova is not afraid to score multiple goals. So this one goal lead is definitely not safe, especially with how much offensive oh. capability Villanova is showing us. But now it looks like St. John's is coming back. Well, we'll have to see if St. John's can get another goal on the board. It's a different story. I know Villanova can put two on the board in a hurry. They can probably put three on the board in a hurry. But facing down a 2-0 deficit is difficult for any squad. Villanova, they're looking to even it up. They don't want it to get to that point. But so far, St. John's defense has been holding strong. Holding strong under two minutes to go. Blaze Donuts, only one in this corner here. That's okay. Primal coming into support. Can't get it past the defense. And I see that style of play often here. They try to bring that ball around the corner. It's going to be very tough to do so when the defense has a fantastic rotation. You have to come in from all angles. This looks like Villanova 
is playing that defense on repeat. Yeah, definitely. And now Villanova, I mean, are they starting to get frustrated? Are they feeling like they're just not turning it on? I mean, what is going on in their comms? I really wonder in times like this. I'm a horse, though. He must see a very fat opportunity for his team. It doesn't work out. Glazed Donuts is there for the stop, but Popcorn is there to hit it back in. The danger is not gone. Primal going to hit it back towards the midfield. I'm a horse going for the big aerial. Aerial's back and forth for these teams. Oh, my goodness. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. The defense fell apart. I'm a horse sneaks it in. Villanova showing us how to get it done. Yeah, I mean, wow. But the thing is still tied up. There is still plenty of time left, especially with how potent Villanova's offense is. Popcorn just barely misses that attack. Doesn't happen often that they miss one, but they get so many chances it might not matter. Prime will bring it back the other way. A nice touch from I'm a horse. Back and forth it goes as the time is ticking down. Oh, a great play from Riles. Look at the move. Oh Look my at goodness. The moves on this boy puts it up on the backboard and into I'm a horse. Two goals for him and the lead back for Villanova. The end was never in doubt for this Villanova squad. They knew it was not a matter of if, but when it happened 24 seconds left to go st john's can they tie it up or is it a clean sweep for villanova and right here very tough to watch if you're a st john's fan because they could bring this back they have 10 seconds left to tie this up but villanova just proving us Time and time again, they're not Yo. gonna stop proving it. You think Villanova's gonna say, oh, we're, we're done after that first goal. No, there's three seconds left. Instead of letting the clock run out, no, we're just gonna throw another one on Riles. Yeah, that's not Villanova style. They've always loved <laughs> to rack up the style points and they do it again here. I wouldn't be surprised. Is that again? Oh, that's another oh, one, popcorn. My goodness. Popcorn with the weirdest flex of all time. What a shot right there. This, <laughs> this scoreline does not tell the full story here of game three. This was a much closer game. At least in compared to the rest of the series. It's just St. John's let it slip away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, think mean, that's the, I think that's the story of this series. You know... That's a good question. Was it really a closer game? We can never really know, but here's what I saw. I saw four minutes of St. John's playing some good Rocket League, and then I saw one minute of Villanova playing incredible Rocket League. And sometimes that's all that matters. You know, when St. John's good Rocket League is one goal, and Villanova's incredible Rocket League is four goals in one minute, you know, I mean, listen... It's not just four goals. It's not just one goal. St. John's, over 15 minutes of play, had one goal this yeah. entire series. One goal pretty, the entire The pretty, lethargic offense it's from unfortunate. St. John's. Unfortunate for them. They just couldn't get the ball rolling. Now, yeah. Villanova, on the other hand, doing math in my head, 11 <laughs> goals throughout the entire series. I mean, high-scoring games it might every have time been except for game scoring, two. It might have been our most scored in this series. Well, how many did Colorado Oh, no score? way. I'm not even... I am 100% doubting. I know there have been higher scoring series here in EGFC. Oh, I just mean but so far today. Yeah, there's so far definitely today, been some higher scores. Actually, actually, our previous series scored 13 goals. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> well, so there, there have been a lot case. of goals scored today. But, um, I mean, it's just Villanova consistent. St. John's, not as much. They were for, for the four minutes, they were consistent in game three. Played very well. I 100% agree with you. Just yeah. couldn't keep it together in the yeah. final minute, and they let Villanova run away with the win. It's unfortunate that it happened to them. But Villanova wasn't going to stop, and that was only game three of the series. If they took it, it's still an uphill battle going through. They would have to hold that confidence going into games four and five. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough thing to ask. Well, it is indeed, and it honestly, it's a tough ask to face Villanova on day one, especially for a team like St. John's. So, 
came out, they fought valiantly. They showed their strength playing to the final minute, even if they were overmatched and overwhelmed. Some great EGF Rocket League action, but we're not done just yet. We've got a couple more matches coming at you. Up next, San Jose State facing off against last year's champs, UT Arlington. And then for the last match of the night, it's going to be Hofstra facing off against William and Mary. Should be some incredible action to check out. Of course, if you want to keep up to date on all the action, you can follow us on all the socials at official EGF. Um, as for me, I've been Cool J. You can follow me on Twitter at Cool J underscore TV. And uh, you guys don't have to follow me on Twitter. That's okay. We'll see you guys <laughs> next match. <laughs>
everybody, and welcome back to the EGF Season 2. We got some more Rocket League action for you. We're almost done, but that doesn't mean the action has to stop. We've got so much more fun coming at you. Here it's going to be San Jose State facing off against UT Arlington. Of course, we've talked about UT Arlington all day long. They were the champs last season. They are on top. They're the big dogs. Everybody's going to be clawing for a chance to beat them, and we're going to see how it goes today. Should be a really fun match to watch because San Jose State, they were no slouches either. They were a pretty good team, so this one should be pretty fun, but I don't know, man. UT Arlington looks like they're returning some of their best players from last year, Genghis and Samba, back on Ooh. the squad. You know, so, you know when you see Samba on a squad? You know they're going to bring some heat here. Oh, UT yeah. Arlington, very stacked squad. But San Jose State, I mean, I saw them playing in the CRL Open Qualifiers in the Summer Series. So they're not a, like, they're not a team to mess around with either. And we'll see which team is the better over this best of five series. Yeah, definitely we are going to see which team is better here. It should be very fun. Um, if I'm not mistaken, though, I believe Nava is a new face for this UTA squad. So that's actually very interesting. How do the champs adjust to having a new player? Well, this is what's really cool about Collegiate Rocket League is that these rosters are ever-evolving. People, uh, new faces show up. Some faces leave when they graduate. It's an ever... I guess it's an ever-changing mesh of players, and I, I think it leads to some of the most interesting combinations of personalities and squads that we are so lucky to see on the field. So I, I think it's actually a very good thing for UTA, but right now, San Jose State striking first toaster. Coming yeah. through, and Genghis was actually in position, but got a little bit outplayed there poster doggo has long been a great member of the san jose state squad at san jose state striking first against the reigning egf champs we'll see if uta can have a response here genghis no slouch either although samba certainly was the magic man for this squad last year he was making all sorts of plays that made me just go absolutely bonkers. So we'll see if he can do it to me again today. Oh my goodness, Nava had an opportunity there. It's Johnny is there for the save, though. Right away, seeing UT Arlington strike back, or attempt to at least, and that's very good for them. It's not foreboding anything too unfortunate their way. They're showing that they can stay in it even if they're down a goal, and that's the mental fortitude that we've come to expect from a squad like this. But now that's an open net opportunity for it's Johnny. The defense from UTA nowhere to be seen. Yeah. It's a yeah, little quiet I mean, out there on the orange side. What is going on here? It's Johnny just puts it in from long range. San Jose State, they came to play here. Toaster Doggo and it's Johnny both returning starters from the squad last year for San Jose State. And they are putting this team on the board here early on. UTA, I feel like they were undefeated or I'm pretty sure they were undefeated in the regular season play they did have a little bit more struggles in the playoffs on their way to an eventual championship but just absolutely very strong stuff from this squad and for them to come out here and struggle like this San Jose State maybe looking to put a statement out to the league that the champs can be defeated and San Jose State are a team to look out for yeah I mean UT Arlington Tied for fourth place in the CCA Summer Series this past summer, too. So this is not a team to really mess around with. But you're right, there was a change. Nava in for Adverse Meteor. So maybe this jumbling of the roster could have some weird implications for this squad. But again, we're in game one of match one of their season here in the EGFC. So anything can happen going forward yeah anything indeed now the thing is it is of course day one maybe uta they just need a few warm-up games before they get back to their mid-season form or maybe we're seeing a harbinger of more of what's to come or maybe it's just game one and we got a lot of rocket league left to go we'll have to see dd playing it in Genghis and samba 
doing what they do. Their magic in the aerials, and it almost works out, but Nava just can't quite find the finish there. And that one is unfortunate indeed for UTA. That was an incredible setup from Genghis and Samba. And you can tell Nava's actually meshing really well into this roster as, as Nava almost puts one in themselves. But that's because Nava was not just a new face here, but was the sub last season for hmm. this UTA squad. So gotcha. uh, again, nothing is too out of the ordinary here for UTA. And they yeah. seem to have settled in after this two goal lead uh, came out for San Jose State. Yeah, and that's really the advantage as well of these uh, of the EGF League is that you're able to give them the experience, but it seems like it's not paying off so far. San Jose State are cruising 3-0 here with just a minute left to go. It, it just feels like UTA hasn't found their mark quite yet. And going into the series, San Jose State looking very comfortable. And yeah, I, I guess it's just... Oh, I mean, they wow. get one. Okay. They get one off the See, kickoff. The I mean, thing. I mean, UTA sometimes they're like Villanova in the sense that sometimes just got to open the floodgates and then it all comes out. We'll have to see three one. I've seen UTA put up goals in bunches before, so a minute is plenty of time for a comeback. I mean, Genghis was the one who scored that, but Samba was the one that really made it come all together because oh, yeah. he was actually able to hit the defender away from making that save. So 40 seconds left, UTA and have to see if they can mount a comeback here for San Jose State if they created this three goal or really now two goal lead. Is that going to be enough? Oh man. Well, you know, as every second ticks down, the clock is just working in San Jose State's favor. UTA needs to score in a hurry and they we're struggling. Oh, oh no. no! That oh, is, that's no. rough, folks. And you know, this ball wasn't even going to go into the net, and it was going to bounce down for one of the San Jose State defenders to come clean with it and boom it downfield. But instead, it breathes new life in the UTA. I mean, hey, they take those. Yeah, and I mean, definitely UTA. They'll take those. Ten seconds left now. They only need one goal. They can certainly do it. If they can make it happen here. Oh, DD going to clear the danger there. Trying to clean his name. Now as time runs out, it's going to have to be a last second goal. Oh, Toaster wow. Fights it, and there it is. San Jose State on the reigning champs. Comes out in game one, three to two. Little shaky there for San Jose State going into the final moment of game shaky. one. UT Arlington almost sneaking away with a tie and forcing the overtime now that that would have been very interesting because that would have, that would have just taken a lot of that momentum away from san jose state now i still think a whole lot of the, that momentum is now diminished though because ut arlington was able to come back now if san jose state was able to keep that 3-1 lead maybe that 3-0 lead things would be looking a lot different going into game two but now that ut arlington has this life breathed into them I think we're going to see a much different game two outcome. Yeah, I will have to see. UTA certainly has all the momentum at this point, as you mentioned. But going into game two here, looks like we are going to be having a little bit of problems with our technical difficulties here <laughs> popping up yet again on the stream. <laughs> so let's see if we're going to be able to. Well, it looks like. Maybe we're working. No, I think we're gonna. Let's have go to, go to a break, break to folks. A we're gonna remake break, the server. It's we'll okay. We'll be it right, right out. back.
folks, we're just cutting right to it. Game two, we're back into this. Fresh five minutes on the clock. San Jose stay up one game in this best of five. Let's see if they can make it two. Yeah, I mean, honestly, UTA though, they had all the momentum at the end of that game. Question is, can they keep it going? Or can San Jose State oh, no. bring it on back, do more of this insane stuff that they've been doing? Oh my goodness. Heavyweights trading punches so far today. 30 seconds in and no one is safe. No one's safe indeed. Let's see though. Toaster Doc. Doing a lot for the San Jose State offense. And, and really, it's just the energy that they're bringing is just... I think it's catching UTA, UTA off guard. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like UTA was expecting to be able to come into this and play their game. They weren't expecting to be challenged. And, you know, San Jose State just came up and punched them in the mouth and said, you know what, we're here. We can challenge you. <laughs> You've got to come to us. You know, we're not we're not going to let you play your game. You've got to bring the fight to us. And so far, UTA has kind of struggled to respond to that aggression. Now, I mean, bringing out some of the demos, maybe we'll see a little bit of a bloodbath. We saw some earlier today, but here in this series, it's been pretty clean so far. Samba going for the goal, oh. but Toaster the Doggo is on it. That one was no sweat for him to stop there. Oh, a great aerial Please. from him. It's Johnny coming in for the finish. Oh my goodness. You cannot give Toaster Dog this much time in the air. Look at him fluttering around. And not only lands and gets the final touch, like, the, so many opportunities to get in front. Was just able to bring it downfield uncontested. Uncontested indeed. And a great start for San Jose State as they continue on in game two. They are oh, taking the no. fight to them. Oh my goodness, DD with the score. And I don't want to be harsh on the UTA guys, but I know them well enough that this is just not their game. It's not their game in San Jose State. They're doing a fantastic job of recognizing it. They are bringing the pressure, doing everything right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's insane right now, the way San Jose State is playing. We knew they were good. But well, we knew UTA was the best. And uh, now we're rethinking everything we thought we knew as as we approach the halfway point here. Of oh, two. my. Samba. There it is. There this is it what is. I'm talking about with this guy. He does this for like he does this with his eyes closed. Yeah, he does Samba this with two hands tied behind his back while he's eating breakfast. I mean, Samba it's absolutely ridiculous. Mechanical beast. Full boost in the tank. Possession of all on the wall. He's going to do that every time. No question about it. Gives UTA another chance here in game two. Could potentially lead to tying goal here because they have possession. Oh, my goodness. Samba, every time. I can't. Every time I watch this guy, he does something insane. Every time. He's so good. I love watching Samba. I love watching this team, but I'm loving watching San Jose State too. Toaster Doggo. It's Johnny and Didi making plays up and down the pitch here and bringing the fight to our defending champs now. And they are showing that they really deserve a conversation among the best teams in EGF right now. We'll have to see if that holds true. Can they hold this lead for two minutes or will UTA take it back and wake up here in game two? Could be enough for them. But the booming clear is coming out, but it's right back into the UTA possession. And no offense will be generated on the side of San Jose. Yeah, um, the game has slowed down now. Both teams are playing a little bit of ping pong. Smack ball all the way up and down the pitch. But Samba, whenever you see Samba in the air with the ball, you got to be worried. But it's Johnny. He doesn't fear. He just goes right up for that 50-50 and he takes it from him. They are not letting Samba do anything. They're not letting him get these style plays because they are just, every time he touches the ball, they're going hard at him. They're not letting him do anything. Not letting them do a single thing. Here comes DD. A little bit of a miss touch there. Gives Samba the ball with some boost. Johnny getting in front of that could have been a disaster moment. 
Ooh, back and forth. Johnny had a setup over the goal there, but just barely couldn't connect with Toaster Doggo. One minute left on the board. One goal is the difference. Samba up to Nava, back to Samba. Oh. No! A rare miss hit from Samba, and that was the opportunity right there. That was the tie score. But Samba just missed it. And for someone who does so much for this team, it's a heartbreaker. As Didi puts in it, the third goal for San Jose State. And that might just ice this game. It might just indeed. But can you really, can you really think of another way this was going to go? San Jose State setting a precedence here. Saying that no matter what your past exhibitions have been against these other schools you can make the changes and become a top contender yeah absolutely incredible from this team great stuff a great statement but the thing is this game may be maybe over probably over but this series it's still a best of five they've still oh, got yeah, to finish absolutely off. UTA is still one of the most explosive teams in EGF. I can't really count them out. Honestly, if anyone is going to reverse sweep today, it'd be UTA. I have no doubts in my mind that that is probably the most accurate statement I've heard on this entire broadcast. I have no oh, doubt in ouch. my mind. <laughs> No, I, I mean, it, it's serious. No, like, I'm not, not like, no, to I disparage you, anything else. But that is true. 100%. Yes. And the, the thing is, if we believe in UTA, that's that's one thing. But does UTA believe in themselves? I think they do. They have shown us time and time again through their past. It's like, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the series <laughs> score is. The series is not over until game five has shown its face. I mean... That's not really true because we've seen two 3 0 sweeps so far this season. It's evening not over our till it's over. It's you not over until it's over. You're absolutely right. The series. San Jose State, they came out. They've played incredible so far. I believe they can finish this series if they want to. But I'm looking across the aisle at UT Arlington, and I'm just thinking to myself, man, I don't feel like any lead is safe against this team. You've got the clock has to hit zero. And then you can breathe a sigh of relief because they are just that relentless, that good. Well, I mean, it's technically difficult. Oh, okay. But, but, in, but in classic fashion, I fixed it, folks. We're good to go. We got our players in the field. We're getting this match going. Okay. Fresh five minutes on the clock in game three. Can San Jose State complete the sweep? This would be our third sweep that we've seen together. And, for, and that would throw a wrench in every prediction I would have had for this evening. Yeah, all, I was expecting game fives all night long. You could just tr trash the brackets at this point, put them in the shredder, completely annihilated because teams have not been living up to expectations. They've been breaking the expectations so far today, and the action has been incredible. We always have a fun time here at EGF. Now, a minute into this game, back and forth it goes. San Jose State winning the ball control battle ever so slightly so far. But, you know, UTA, all it takes is a little sliver of an opening and they can go for it. But Nava just can't quite get the hit there. He's been struggling here so far today. And, you know, you have to wonder. You don't like to put it on one player, but the comms usually are an incredible strength of UTA, but seem to be a bit scattered today. Scattered, and we're seeing the individual mechanical skill. I mean, Sabo full boost is dangerous. Can he get another one on there? That ball is dangling in front of the net. Nava couldn't get there in time. Split second decisions here and there really add up. San Jose yeah. State, they stay alive. Oh, Nava and Toaster Doggo getting caught up there along the wall. But now Genghis on the ball coming through across the pitch. Tries to pinch oh, with a no. teammate. Actually does work, but not quite enough. So Chicago just barely able to get the reverse. Pop it into reverse. And then back on up. Get the stop there. Did he That's know? not good. Oh, no. Johnny. Johnny was last one back.
but thought DB was going to get the touch and yeah. gets bumped by Samba on his way out of the goal as well. Multiple things went wrong in that play, and because of that, UT Arlington striking first in game three. Yeah, UT Arlington finally showing up here. Now, granted, they took advantage of a pretty big mistake on the San Jose State side, but that's what you got to do. That's what it's all about, taking advantage of those mistakes. You see it, you've got to capitalize. You cannot let mistakes go unpunished. And that is the mark of a good team there in UT Arlington. Now, though, are they going to make a mistake of their own? Nava is back. He is able to get the stop. Samba with an incredible hit, as usual. Oh, my goodness. Long range from Gangaston. Gold Tostadago is able to get the save. But Nava comes touch. flying in. And this is the strength of UTA. Relentless attack. Yes, Tostadago barely gets that stop. But guess what? They've got two more guys ready to go back into the goal. And there it is for Samba. And that ball was going to go in, I believe, from Nava, but Samba to shake things up, redirecting it away from the defense, making sure there was absolutely no chance that a San Jose State defender would be able to get a touch on that ball. But now here comes Didi, can't get the touch required to throw it on net, but San Jose State waking up here in the second half of game two. Can they get a goal and potentially make this one interesting? Well, we'll have to see two minutes left to go down to two goals is a relatively safe lead but with the way san jose state's been playing i really wouldn't feel comfortable i don't think uta can afford to step off the gas at all they've got to keep pedal to the metal keep this aggression going but right now they're stuck in their own goal box they can barely move right now because san jose state has control of the whole field but it doesn't matter if you have control of the whole field if you can't get it in the net and that's the bottom line for San Jose State right now in this game three. They just can't find a way to score. Somehow UTA is making the plays work. They are going back for the win. They're finding the magic of last season and they're bringing it into season two. One minute, 25 seconds left here in game three. San Jose State trying to get the sweep here. But it's more and more looking like it's going to be UTA who are going to be able to take game three and extend this series to a game four. And again, here comes oh. another shot. I thought that was going to bar down into the net. Now I'm going to finish it. No, it's not. It's Johnny getting in the way. On the defensive here, they need to find some way to attack. They need to get back in this game. They're down two goals. 50 seconds to go. Can they find anything? Now UTA on the offensive. They have all the ball control. They have all the pitch control. Oh, there we go. It's Johnny on the counterattack. Nava just gets exactly the hit they needed. So Strago playing it deep downfield. Plays it into the corner. Didi right behind him. Great team play there. But where was Johnny? He wasn't there. I mean, he's supposed to be here. Here's Johnny. Where is he? But it doesn't work there. 20 seconds left to go. Got to forget about it. Got to find a play now. You need to score because the time is ticking. San Jose State, it's slipping through their fingers. They had a clean sweep of the reigning champs, and it's all falling apart. Falling apart, but there's still a chance here. This ball's in front of the net. Can someone get a touch on it? No, and now it's looking like UT Arlington is going to be forcing game four. And we will not end the night with another sweep here, Cool J, which is always nice because we always love to see more and more and more Rocket League. UT Arlington, though, making it very interesting. Can they force a game five? Now, that is the real question. I mean, you know, we said it. We said it in game two. If At the end of game two, really, if any team can reverse sweep, it's UT Arlington. The fact that they went down 0-2 to begin with was kind of insane. San Jose State, they played some great Rocket League today, but they're playing a very dangerous team, and I think they need to be aware of what they're up against. I think that game was a little taste of what they're up against. They've got to come into Game 4 better than before. They need to be clean because now UT Arlington, they've got momentum. They've got motivation. They don't want to get 3 0 They don't want to get 3 one They don't want to get disrespected. They're the reigning champs. Now they're starting to play like it. That was some great stuff from them. Great stuff indeed as we're waiting. No, I think we're good to go. We're in. 
All in right. game. Okay, and we're back. We're so, good to go. And we're, we're in just in time. Off. Wasting no time here. He's not interested. He's not interested at all. Oh my goodness. San Jose State University off the kickoff. That's one way I like so kickoff goals so interesting to me because they don't require a momentum. I, I think that's the most like uh, mind boggling thing because you think of Rocket League, you have to like spend all of this time creating your offensive pressure, but no kickoff goal can just set the pace as soon as the game starts. And now if you're UT Arlington, you have to shake that off. Because you still have four and a half minutes to go here in game four. Yeah, of course. I mean, and that's the thing. Yeah, it really, really hurts to give up a goal like that so early on in the game. But you still have so much Rocket League left to play. Can UTA find it in themselves to force a game five? Or is San Jose State going to finish out the series after giving up game three? Let's see how it goes. DD what a beautiful shot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, beautiful setup and a beautiful shot. But a nice save from Genghis. Now, Genghis coming the other way. He is looking to strike they want to even up the score nava with a nice little touch there not going to do too much but putting a lot of pressure on the san jose state defense they're out of oh, position and gig is no. going to score and i'm looking at johnny who tried to clear that one to the side instead it's Genghis. and now johnny's thinking oh you're tearing me apart Genghis. <laughs> johnny no. trying to hit that one to the outside instead lays it up for his opponent to tie the game. You know, sometimes it really do be like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> UTA evens it up. You hate to see it. But now here we go. Genghis coming down the pitch. Nava with a shot on goal. It's Johnny gonna get the save that time, but, oh, Samba, another rare miss. What is going on with Samba today? Is he just rusty? I mean, he is usually the rock for this roster but he's had quite a few missteps like that so far. I'm wondering if he's okay. In, in Samba's defense, one or two mistouches here and there, still doing a fantastic job, and he's yeah. really a playmaker oh. on the field. Really a difference here. That, just, yeah. that is the standard that Samba has set for himself. The play that he puts out there every single game is so incredible that you're absolutely right. One or two missteps is like, whoa, is he okay? I mean, is he doing good? Because he's that good. He doesn't make those mistakes. And, you know, it, it is a little surprising to see those. So, you know. Counter argument, Bill though. has played a great game. Counterpoint. Very intense game four. Yes. Very yes. close. As Very close. You're going to make... You're going to make mistakes, but again, mechanical mistakes, totally fine. It's those mental errors that will really cost you in the long run. Yeah, and so far they've been able to stay clear of those, but Toaster Doggo, oh, look at him zoning out Samba. Genghis has the open net. Oh, look at Genghis. Didi, he can't get back. He's not fast enough, but Genghis gets the score. That's two goals for him here in this crucial game four as UTA is hanging by a thread, hoping to force a game five. Oh, goodness gracious. Genghis saw that one from a mile away. Able to hit that on target. It's just classic UTA fashion at that point. It is indeed. And now two minutes to go. UTA with the lead. And again, they have all the momentum. It seems, but Toaster oh, Goggle. Oh. What? This is very interesting. This just goes to show if you see an opportunity, hey, you go for it. I mean... I didn't think Toaster was gonna. I don't think Toaster was going to make that a 50-50. Ends up doing it somehow. Forces the issue. It and is, we have oh, a kickoff goal. Wow. <laughs> and this look at that. Like he's elated. He's so happy getting this goal for him. Oh to no, DD. DD oh. went around the ball. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, well, there's those mental mistakes you were talking about showing up at the worst possible time for San Jose State. They just got the equalizer, and then they give up a kickoff goal. You hate to see it, but Toaster Doggo getting the demo. They're looking to set up an attack during this 3v2 period, but it doesn't work. Genghis going to knock it back into the midfield and back on to San Jose State's half. Samba coming into the corner. Oh, did you, did you see that? 
Oh. Samba tried to knock out Johnny, who was in the goal, and Johnny just jumped right over him. Good so awareness. Right there. Yeah, well, incredible if... awareness from him, avoiding that bumper play. That could have been deadly for the San Jose State squad, who's already down a goal. If that went through, maybe down two goals. But now, on the other foot, San Jose State pushing in. Tostadago gets the pinch play. Didi and Johnny both over the middle. Just... Samba! Oh, target Samba with the save. Nava playing it back over the middle. Tostadago coming down the field, but Nava comes right in and he says, no, this is my ball, I'm taking it. And Genghis Samba coming down the field back and forth. Oh my goodness, one minute left to go. Can San Jose State tie this up and force overtime? Can they indeed? Let's see. Here's an ample opportunity. Doggo trying to get this one center, but it gets popped away. Didi can't get up in time. Here comes Genghis to throw it on. Johnny is there. And now they have to have a quick turnaround here. But no, instead, it's going to be more offensive opportunities, more time wasted as UTA keeping this ball on the blue half. Well, you know, you really don't need that much time to score a goal, but San Jose State, they may not be thinking that in their minds as that timer ticks down and they need this goal, or they're going to go to a game five against the reigning EGF champs. They almost had it locked up. That's a big up. bump. Oh, oh, but Samba in perfect position. This is what he's That's known centered. for. On offense, on defense, all over the pitch. Samba makes the plays when he needs to the most. There Samba it is. Far down, knocking it in on his own. We will be going to a game five reverse sweep territory as UT Arlington have been fighting tooth and nail through this entire series. It has just been a battle. Oh, man. So they yeah. have not won the war quite yet. They still have five more minutes of regulation before we figure that out. You know, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to leak the script. Um, <laughs> I didn't didn't realize that it was already decided that UTA was going to reverse sweep this game. Um, wow. Two to two. We are going to a game five. And this series... If it wasn't interesting already, it's a whole lot more interesting. I honestly, I can say I don't really know what's going to happen here. UTA, they have all the momentum, but you know what? San Jose State, it's they had all the forth. momentum going into game three. So who knows? The well, pendulum swings. The pendulum, it swings, and the clock begins its countdown. Five minutes, game five. Let's get this going. Yeah, let's get this going indeed. And we are back into the game as these guys are ready and raring to go here and so far nothing too crazy back and forth ball flying around san jose state they lost two in a row but they have a chance here to beat the defending champs on day one of season two this is huge this is massive for them they had a good season but this is how they want to start off a great season but Samba, now on the ball, trying to bring it back the other way. Johnny is having none of it. He brings it right in. A great little touch off the back there, but Nava is right there to clear it away. These teams, so well matched, so in tune. The timing, so perfect for both of them. It's incredible how well they are playing against each other right now. It is, but we've already had a minute go by. No one has scored quite yet. Neither of these teams want to make the fatal error. As a speculative shot from Nava it easily gets bounced away from Johnny. And now it's San Jose State's turn to play some defense as UT Arlington is going to start their offense. They are indeed going to try and start their offense. We're a minute and a half into this game five. And so far it has been neck and neck. The ball control really even. The field control really even. Oh, he gets a shot on goal there, but he's just off target going for the upper bins, but not going to be there this time. Now Johnny coming into the corner, looking to try and play it across the middle. Nava not having any of it. Oh, a nice little touch from Didi, but Samba right there as well. The rotations on the offense and defensive sides are incredible for both of these teams. It makes it so difficult to score, so difficult to attack, so difficult to defend against as well, but they find a way to get it done. Johnny playing it deep downfield a perfect touch from Genghis clearing that danger but the danger is not gone Toaster Doggo brings it back over the middle and again UTA not breaking a sweat getting rid of that one and one thing I'm noticing here San Jose State is 
using so many resources to get the ball downfield. But when the ball is centered, no one is there to hit the shot yeah. in that. No one is pushing up. They're playing too conservatively for their own good, and they're wasting opportunities. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can imagine, though, after games three and four, where, you know, they were able to score goals still, but they just gave up too many. There it is. Oh, my goodness. There it is. More than halfway into this game, Didi scores the first goal of game five for San Jose State. A great assist from Toaster Doggo, too. A little bit of an over pursuance from this UTA defense, and San Jose State takes advantage. UTA now going to be fighting from behind here. Second half of game five. Can they tie it up? I have no doubt in my mind that they have the ability to. Now San Jose State with a huge bout of momentum here. Here comes another goal chance. Toast to Dago. Can't get there in time, but it doesn't matter. San Jose State, they're still on the offense. Yes, they are indeed. Two minutes left to go. A one-score lead is really hanging by a thread in the world of Rocket League, especially against this high-flying UTA offense. But San Jose State, nonetheless, they are still fighting. They're not letting off the gas. They are ready to go. They know they can't put it in the cruise control yet. They've got to seal this Game 5 victory because, like I said earlier... There it is. Until the clock hits zero against UTA, you cannot rest. And Toaster Doggo, he's shown us just that. Puts it in the back of the net. No resting for the San Jose State squad until they get the dub. And I was just looking at everyone on UTA and Samba made the decision to go for that corner boost. I got a little too greedy there. Took a little too much time to get back. And by the time he knew oh, it was too late, goodness. does not matter. Oh my goodness. Is that Does that clock say zero, meet and greet? The clock does say? not say zero. It says oh, a minute 34 goodness. left. That's what it says. And that's what UTA knows. They can score at will. Two to one. Still a lead for San Jose State, but UTA letting them know, you can't put the cruise control on just yet. You're not safe. We're still you know, here. Safe. We're you in know, the closet. Cool, cool we're Jay. under the bed. Oh, my God. We're looking for you. Oh, goodness gracious. There's some monsters out here on this field. Okay, back and forth. Just more than a minute, Toaster Doggo gets the demo. San Jose State, look at the ice of the game. They could with another goal here. It'll be, I mean, really not icing, but making it so much more difficult on UTA. But they couldn't quite find the finish there, and that's unfortunate because they had a great setup. Now Nava, Samba, Genghis, all setting up a line in midfield here, looking for an opening to go in, and they see oh, it. Oh, no yeah, way. Genghis. No oh, way, Genghis. Far. He just does it all himself. I mean, Samba to lay it up for him but he just takes it and runs with it and wow uta you know wow. you know cool jay you're right it's not over till it's over it's we gotta say zero 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 or uta they're gonna be coming for you they're gonna be doing whatever they can to get the back of that net so you better be doing the same because san jose state they did let off the gas just that little bit, and that's all UTA needed to strike. They smelled the blood in the water, and they tied this game back up. 30 seconds left to go. Are we going to be going to overtime in this game five? Boy, I can't think of a better way to end it, but Nava, he's looking for that aerial, looking for the style points. UTA, they are on the offensive. Can they keep it in San Jose State's half? No, DD with a nice touch. Nava is back. The defensive rotations are perfect. The comms have been cleared. It is incredible for UTA right now. They are firing on all cylinders, but so is San Jose State. How do you find a winner when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? We don't know. Five seconds left to go. It's going to have to be a last second shot or we're going to there. overtime. Toaster Doggo, he doesn't get it. Samba with the save. DD not going to be able to get the touch and it's overtime. Here going here five. overtime game five what more could you ask for in this awesome series all these players have deserved all the accolades so far this one's been action-packed it really has and now in overtime it can be anyone's game it can be over in a snap so we'll have to see who can come out on top Toaster Doggo, Johnny, all of them backtracking for San Jose State right now, trying to make sure they stay safe. 
getting those defensive rotations, getting a nice clear. Now they're going to be able to clear it up. Looking for the counterattack. Johnny playing it up. A nice little hit off the wall towards Toaster Doggo. They're trying to keep this UTA defense on their toes, but it's not working. UTA is reading their every move. Gang gets to solve oh, this combination wow. so deadly, but that time not able to find the target. Samba, I think he was ready to throw that one downtown instead. Sigh of relief for San Jose State as they stay alive here in this overtime one minute in. Yes, one minute in already, and I wonder how much extra Rocket League will these guys have to play? Will we see fatigue start to play a factor here as we went to a full five-game set and overtime in the last game? Who knows? But so far, both teams showing no signs of slowing down. Toaster Doggo with a nice little dribble play, playing it into the corner. Didi is skying towards that ball, but Samba with a good hit. Toaster Doggo and Johnny both back on the defensive side here for San Jose State. Can they find a touch? Nava oh, towards the goal. No. He it off the back wall, but there's nowhere there to follow up. Samba and Genghis, where were you? Yeah, where are you, Samba? The game-winning score, three to two. What did I say? If he just anyone, did it all himself. If he was the whole team. Sweep, it's always UTA. Dread it. Run from it. UTA still arrives. Incredible. Oh my goodness. What a match from these two teams. Wow. You know that <laughs> meme? You know that meme that's like mission status or sick? That's me right now. <laughs> oh my. Samba was the whole team oh, in the last, last five game. seconds there. So if we're going to talk about MVPs, going into overtime, I was going to give it to Geng Genghis oh, for, how for how clutch yeah, you're right. they have been in game five. How mm. clutch they came out here in game five. But after that, after that, and just look I'm at the you. overall series. I'm telling you. Samba. Every time like, I see Samba, he just makes magic happen. He makes me go bonkers. It's I just can't even insane. He's think the magic. right now. Oh, my God. That was but you know what? unbelievable. UTA, they're still our reigning champs. Now they're 1-0. Oh. San Jose State, they just took our reigning champs to a game five on the first day of the season. Mm -hmm. They played absolutely incredible in this series. They couldn't finish it off. It's unfortunate. But but it happens against good teams like UTA, and UTA prove they are still the best. I don't, you heard, I don't know if you heard. I don't know if you heard that, but my stomach just rumbled, <laughs> and it, it 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 shouldn't be because I just had my healthy dose of Rocket League action for the night. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, that was. I'm still in shock. That was just unbelievable, Sam. But what are you doing? Who, who who's controlling this man? Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, Samba is secretly five people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's that, that was Watson. I mean yeah. Watson playing this song. Honestly. Oh my goodness. But like, wow, that was this was a great amount of Rocket League for me at least for the evening. I'm gonna be checking out, but yeah. Folks, like this this was awesome. What a way to end all of this. Wow. Yeah, and Unreal. we wanna give a great thanks to Meet Greek for coming out on the stream tonight having a great time but even though he is going to be going away we do still have at least one more game pops are going to be facing off against william and mary coming up next at you with more egf rocket league action and for those of you who have been with us all night i've been cool jay and i've been here with meet and greek and we're having a great time don't go away
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for the final match of tonight. I'm subbing back in from Meet and Greek. It was a little past his bedtime. That game went to five, and, you know, he's got to get his beauty sleep and whatnot. And if he doesn't, oh, his mom will yeah. let him use the nightlight. It's, it's a whole process, man. It's 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 tough, but we're glad, we glad, we're glad we had him out. Now Hofstra versus William and Mary to close out the night. That last series was electrifying. I don't know how we ever matched that. But honestly, it only gets better here at EGF. We've got some players lined up and ready to go. And we're ready to hop straight into the first match. Now, Cool J, you've gotten to be here for the entire course of the night. We've seen matches all across the board from 3 O's to things as close as that last reverse sweep. How do you think we close the night out? You know, I'm not too sure what to expect from these two teams. Uh, we're going to be seeing, of course, William Mary facing off against Hofstra. Um, officer in the blue, William Mary in the orange, and you know, I really, I didn't really get a good impression of these teams last year on either side. Um, I, I just didn't see enough of them to kind of form a good opinion, and I'm not sure, you know, maybe they've gotten better, maybe they've gotten worse. I don't really know what we'll see from these two, but I'm excited to see it happen. You know, I'm not recognizing a lot of names in this lobby. I think Magic only from Hofstra is the only name that I can remember here. And honestly, the level of play right now looks really good. I, I mean, yeah. I'm watching these guys. They're going a decent pace. We're seeing them challenge for a lot of these balls. Hofstra, especially keeping up the pressure. Kyle has been all over the field in just the first minute alone. It's going to be a tough one for Millie and Mary, it seems like. But they're keeping up on the defense. It's just about building out now, right? Yeah, can they actually convert this into an attacking play? And I, I've got confidence that they'll be able to at some point here. Yeah, de definitely. Uh, already a minute in, though. Still no scoring. Magic, magic with a shot towards the goal. Not quite on target. Happy camper. He's not going to be a happy camper unless he gets some balls in the back of the net. So we'll see if Hofstra can make it happen. But right now, they're sitting in William Mary's half. A little bit uh -oh. of miscommunication there. They Ooh. ran into each other, but it doesn't matter. Magic makes the magic happen. What a shot. It's a nice touch. Nice little, nice little lob over top. Makes the most of uh, an awkward situation. And again, the pressure that Hofstra are putting on is really what did it for him there. Uh, it may have been a nice shot, but all the stuff that came before, super duper important, right? All the boost that they took away, starving out William and Mary from really all of their resources is what nets them the goal. And now the pressure already back on. And no, it's not just one player. Granted, I've said Kyle is all over the field. And he quite frankly feels oppressive in his own right. It's all three players of Hofstra being forward. The rotations oh. are tight and a little bit risky, but they're getting away oh. with them right now. And coming in over top for a Dunkaruski. It's going to be Kyle playing a leapfrog in the midfield for one more goal. Yeah, great stuff there from Kyle. Just tossing it right over the top there, dropping that shot in and making it a 2-0 lead now for Hofstra. Hofstra getting off to a good start here. William Mary has looked good, but not quite good enough so far. Oh, there's plenty of room to, to come back. And I feel like they have been holding their own on defense. Building out of your own half against the team is good, though. This is always a, always a tricky number to try and pull off. It's going to be a good save from Kyle. And now shots from William and Mary. They need to capitalize on this, take away some of the boost, start starving them out from their resources before they let them build out of their half. Or else right now we're going to see what's about to happen happen. And that's Hofstra start coming out on the attack, taking those midfield boosts away, and apply that same amount of pressure that they were earlier. William and Mary are going to be quick to shut it down, keeping the ball in a little bit of a ping pong state for the time being. But Hofstra, always quick to put back on the pressure, already have the ball in the attacking half. Yeah, now halfway through this game one here, and Hofstra firmly in the driver's seat now. And they're not looking to go into cruise just yet. They're looking to finish this one off. Happy Camper Ooh. with a nice demo there. Ooh. Oh! Oh, Legacy with a great save. Kyle definitely should have scored there, but unable to finish off that play. Chimney now coming back down the pitch. Nothing doing for it, though. Hofstra going to toss it right back. Legacy wins in the midfield. At least William Mary, they're coming up to the midfield. They're winning these 50-50 balls. Happy camper, though. Oh! 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 No! Oh, no! Sunshine, you had it, man. Chimney hits it off the backboard. Oh! Legacy tried to come into the finish, but not quite making it happen. I am so sad he didn't complete that fake. And, you know, sadness aside, William and Mary are looking significantly better right now. It seems like it just took them a little bit to get the to get the juices flowing, but they're feeling really good 
about their position, not necessarily in this game, but, you know, overall play-wise, it feels a lot more even than it did in the first minute or so. Jimmy now building out of their half. Counter-attack from Hofstra. Oh. Goes for the shot. Oh, it's so close. Oh. But Happy Camp is going to be the one to put oh. it in. Taps it with the side of his car. With 120 left on the clock. Three goals is going to be quite the feat for William and Mary to try and complete here. Yeah, three goals. A great game here for Hofstra. They are coming out, and they are really imposing their will, playing their kind of Rocket League, and they're having a good time doing it, too. I'd say he is a happy camper now. Up 3-0 oh. over oh. William and Mary. What a oh, sick shot from sunshine. sunshine. So knowing that there's still some sunshine left in the room for William and Mary here. A nice little shot. And I'll say 3-1, a minute 16. Crazier things have happened. There's definitely a comeback in the books here. I know sunshine. It just goes. Close on that, right? Oh, yeah. That course. was the weakest lap I've ever gotten in my entire life. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Look, it's getting late. We've cast like eight Rocket League games. Just I get a pass, owl. right? I'm a night owl, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta have the caffeine, caffeine patches. Stick them up on your arm, <laughs> so you can. Oh man. As if oh, my sleep schedule wasn't boy. awful enough. Oh boy. Yo, kids, stay in school, kids. Okay, so we're continuing on. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I am in college. I am doing my classes like a, a good student do not come after oh yeah you. me too me too okay why'd you All say right. stay in school why this not? isn't about school this is about schools right you know game game this close is about 30 rocket seconds it, it's winnable is for william and mary rocket league. <laughs> okay. oh good save by sunshine wow. um, they don't have any boost to build out of their half right now they're gonna really struggle to get this one up great height from legacy though you get up to that ball and at least challenge it now sunshine has a decent amount of boost off the wall you're going to want this one to go in, though, if you want to come back. And it doesn't seem very likely. It's seven seconds ticked down on the clock. Down in the corner. Yeah. And Mary hoping for anything, any way back into the game. It just doesn't seem too likely. And with that, that's them done and dusted for game number one. It's going to be Hofstra taking it away. But William and Mary right on their tails heading into game number two. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, I would say I liked what I saw from William and Mary later on in that game. But... Hofstra just built up that huge early lead, and it was so difficult for them to overcome. Yeah, it, it was all the early game is really what it felt like. You didn't even check the shots. It was something along the lines of 10 to even just a little bit of change from William and Mary. It All of those came in the later half, right? Yeah. All of those came when they were speeding up. I don't have any criticisms of what I really want to see from William and Mary right now other than more of the same. I think you play that game out just the second half two times over. I think we're looking at a dead even match, and... Maybe even another five-game series, Cool J. Maybe, yeah. Well, we'll have to see. I'd certainly appreciate some more competitive Rocket League going between these two teams as we're getting ready for game two. Hofstra put up a very good performance in game one, but William and Mary was hot on their heels over that last minute, so let's see if they can keep that momentum going. Kickoff is away, and we are underway for game two. Already, it's William Mary coming out the gate, swinging, playing it back into Hofstra territory. Kyle is all over this ball right now, though. Magic, oh my god, I thought he was about to lay that one down. That would have been sick, nasty. But no, it's just happy Cameron. Clean up the crew for him. William and Mary getting a little bit of possession. Notably, Hofstra much less aggressive than they were last time. Not going for a lot of the boost stealing shenanigans that we saw. Not going for too many of the demos, unless happy camper comes up with a little something something it's just a fairly neutral game for the time being now the team wants to overcommit, right it's a new game i think hofstra understand how close william and mary were and now they know what to be scared of it's just one more ball to go in but no happy camper he's there just in time william and mary laying on the pressure though nice and thick with four minutes left on the clock yeah definitely and still no scores on the board despite the attacks that have come through from both sides we'll see who's gonna strike first I think they're going to have a big advantage in this game as both of these teams seem to be very momentum based. So at least early on, that's the impression that I'm getting. Hofstra, of course, have been looking very good over that first game, but things can change. The ball is kind of bouncing around here. Both teams trying to see if they can set something up, but really getting shut down before they can even get started. Caldo not going to go words, going to get dealt with by Sunshine there. Now Sunshine sees an opportunity for a counter attack. He is sprinting down the sideline here. Chimney, let's it go towards the demo. Oh, 
Magic in the perfect position. They had the demo goal set up, but Magic says, I don't think so, and he's going to get the stop. Yeah, and if Sunshine lets another one go, William and Mary are kicking themselves, right? They've had a lot of really awesome shot opportunities, right? Building out of your half, everything off of every single wall, the roof, the floor, you name it. They've tried it, but they haven't actually put any of those on target. They haven't actually threatened the goal at all. And I think Hofstra are getting a little bit more comfortable with that as they play more and more out of their own half. It's going to be a clear cross, open net. Kyle saved by Sunshine. Back into the corner, still in William & Mary territory. A fantastic cross from Happy Camper, but taken out yet again by Chimney. William & Mary have stepped up big time right now, and I think that was the most pressure we've seen either of these teams under in a hot minute, Cool J. They've adapted oh, yeah. very well. But again, a lot of this is just going to come down to that very first goal, and it's Kyle on target. Great Ooh. save oh, by Chimney. Man. The last possible second to get to that ball as well as another one threatens the back net. Oh. Magic shoves it in taking no questions on his way there yeah honestly i mean he just he, he really just went in hard on that one he was not taking names he was not asking questions he was just scoring goals and he does it right there more than halfway into this game but hofstra better late than never is what they say as they take the go-ahead goal oh no is that an open net okay no another one off target for william and mary and that's kind of concerning, right? They've had so many great plays. I feel like it's dead even. They need oh. one in, and there it is. Sunshine evening up the scores from high above. Gray down, and that's exactly what they needed. The challenge on to Happy Camper. Now, how do they play after this, right? They've got a shot on goal, but I feel like it was just a 50-50, right? I feel like the habit hasn't been changed yet of, okay, we're not hitting shots on goal. You, you can't just win a 50-50 and say, oh, wow, I, you know, our shot taking magically, magically saved. You know, I know yeah, they've got yeah, it in yeah. them. It's ju just about getting it there, right? Everyone's got those games. Oh, my God, they're cursed. So, they're so cursed. many chances. Sunshine's such a good player, but somehow he just can't finish off these shots over and over. And it just feels bad, man. But they are still tied. They have that going for them. Off the top bar is Happy Camper, but no one there to follow up on it. That would have been a great setup for a shot if anyone could have gotten in there for the rebound. But here comes Kyle, Monster Energy and all, playing it off the backboard to Happy Camper, and there is a score. 2-1 Hofstra up again. Sunshine's kicking himself for not making that one earlier. And I don't know, man. I, I feel like Sunshine's just like a power midfielder. Like, he's there to set up the shots, and then every time he's got to make one himself, he's like, where were you guys? Where's my striker? <laughs> Because he's, he's setting up so many. You? He's created oh, so many opportunities for this team, but he's having to try and complete them himself, and it doesn't seem Ooh. to be much of a specialty. Magic, however, is going to finish those every single time. Great touch. Sunshine, unfortunately, set him up. The waterfall comes down. Legacy not able to make the save. 1.30 left on the clock. Two on the board needed for William and Marion. It seems like a far fetch from what they've been able to complete thus far, and for the scoreline, I feel like this match... It's not portrayed by the numbers, you know? It's been so much closer than the scoreline would tell you. Oh, yeah. Magic! Oh, wow. I thought he got it. I thought he got yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, that was an incredible touch from Magic. But really, William and Mary, they weren't even sweating on that play. They, they've they been sweating on a lot of plays, but that one they were not worried at all. They knew they had one under control. Sunshine able to get the touch. A minute left to go. Up by two is Hofstra. Played very well in game one. They're looking to win this game two. Go to match point. William and Mary, they want to strike back. Bring us to a best of three, essentially, starting in game three. So we'll see oh, how it goes. Nice. Magic, oh my god. This touch from Magic, bringing it off the backboard. Kyle flying in. Oh, man. But the monster energy doesn't connect that time. And he is going to fly right past it. But what is this for Happy Camper? Are oh. they just going to let him do that? They didn't have anybody in a good position to shut him down. Everyone was like, no, you get it. No, you get it. No, you get it. And the ball's in the back of the net, right? Sunshine goes for it, but Happy Camper has driven it all the way across the net. There's no way he could have reached that, underestimated the shot. And honestly, I just got to give all the props to Happy Camper there. That's going to be most likely the nail in the coffin. Oh, if, that's, if this one isn't, I don't know what is. Sunshine does manage to get there for the save, though. More importantly than all these goals and such, though, is how much time Hofstra taking off the clock, right? We were looking at 3-1 scoreline. Two goals, the difference, and it's taken that long for William and Mary to actually get that shot on goal. I can't imagine two goals in 30 seconds happening without a miracle right now. And with the fifth on the board for Hofstra, it's feeling even more likely that we're heading over to a game three match point for the blue side. Yeah, Hofstra just 
finding ways to get it done today. Kyle finally gets his Mountain Dew there, finishing off that shot at the end. Five to one. And honestly, William and Mary, they look so good. They look so close and into these games. But somehow at the end, it all just falls apart. You hate to see it, but fantastic play from Hofstra so far today as they're going to go up 2-0 in this series. All right, all right. Give me, give me just a second. I'm going to wait for this match to end. Oh, my God. Is that all the way? That's going to touch. No, not quite. All right. not it, quite. It, it, was a, it was another game taken by Hofstra. But I feel like what, what William and Mary really need right now, right? Just a really. solid pep talk right so probably not watching the match if you're watching this, right? look at look at me hey boys yeah, yeah I, I, boys boys listen up take a knee right take, take, <laughs> take a knee get a, get around y'all got this y'all saw what they were doing at the end of the first game now get back out there and do what you were doing at the end of the first game you can't keep them on the back foot drive the ball yourself you can hit the back of the net stop aiming for the crossbar when you're two feet away and you guys get five goals up in that game no problemo Back in there. It's not that bad. <laughs> Just hit your shots. Lay them in. I don't care how. Walk. Drive. Two miles an hour. They're easy goals. They're open goals. You've done the hard part. Just walk it in. Walk it in, boys. I'm the assistant coach, by the way. I just... Walk it in. You're just just hype man. Just like repeat every other yeah. every couple words. All right, guys. All right, boys. Circle up. Circle William up. Barry on three. On <laughs> for coach door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i need one of those uh you know they got in the nfl the guys who like hold the coach back on the sidelines <laughs> i want one of yeah. those guys can you be that yeah 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 i can be the i can be the hold back coach when you try and run on the field i just <laughs> i got you i got you bro <laughs> all right game number three Hofstra is killing it right now, holding it down, playing as strong as ever up against William and Mary. And honestly, I got to say, Hofstra came out of last season not looking the greatest. Still, you know, mediocre middle of the table team. Right now, yeah. looking incredible. I got to hand everything over to them. William and Mary are putting up a hell of a fight. Hasn't been enough. And if they made all the goals that they missed, wow. th this game would be tied right now. We'd be looking at a 1-1. One -one. But no. Well, Hofstra are the ones locking it down. They're staying consistent. They're hitting their shots, and they're keeping it cool. Look at this angle from Magic, dude. That's the stuff they put in the movies. Yeah, he's just doing it to him. I mean, he doesn't even wait for us to get into it. Nine seconds in, and he's already scoring. Incredible stuff. Impatient play, but, you know, we love to see it from Hofstra. They are really starting to flex their muscles now. And, you know, you're right. Last season, they, you know, they put up decent showing they definitely were not one of the best teams though but now this year incredible stuff from them playing very very well so far today lots of pressure again from william Mary. they gotta make it count another missed shot on an open net you're stop it just aim really the other way stop. oh my goodness uh it's so william frustrating they're so good but so not making goals at the same time yeah well, you know, I mean, the thing is, though, that is, in a sense, a positive. You lose this set, most likely, unless they can put it together here, which would be absolutely insane. But, you know, if they lose this set, they go uh, they go back to practice. They say, you know what, boys? We got all the setups. We're doing everything. Coach Door told us. He showed us what we had to do. We just got to go out there and do it. We got to get that little teeny bit better. One second, one inch makes the big difference here for this team and William and Mary can start putting some goals in the board you know what maybe it's not coach door they need maybe it's maybe it's coach Navic right Mavic had some wise words last season we were watching I think it was Georgetown down like 6-2 and all he says is right he's like here's some advice free from coach Navic he says just score and Just then they came back four, down from four goals. Four so four I don't know if that's the wise words they need or what, but this match has been the same pretty much the entire time. It's William Mary, they're so close. Hofstra oh is so God. strong though. They're shutting it down. 1v1 for Chimney, lays it across to Legacy, but Magic's up in the air, catching it out, shutting the play down. Three minutes up, and that's all that William and Mary have to try and even up the scoreline here. I think if Hofstra start taking this one up by another goal difference, that's when you really start worrying, Cool J. I mean, really, you just see them. They're, do they're dodging, uh -oh. dipping, ducking, diving, and dodging. They're just doing everything out here. <laughs> Great stuff from them. And Hofstra, they are magic. Wide open net. This is 
the view that every Rocket League player lives for right there. Yeah, I mean, how can you fail when you're following the, the five Ds of Docket League, you know? It's, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Oh, no, Happy Camp. Oh, it's an easy one. Dar down! That's a lucky save for Legacy. Fortunate that he missed. 240, though. It's still plenty of time. Still plenty of time for William and Mary to try and make this one back in. But it's so difficult. Hofstra, the pressure that these guys are putting on is ridiculous. I feel like they have such a strong understanding of, right, when can I actually push three men forward? And they're doing it so often. They're abusing the fact that William and Mary aren't creating counterattacks nearly often enough. And now they've got another one here. Chimney for the counter. It's a little bit of an awkward jump, though, especially with no boost in the tank. It's going to leave just Legacy to try and defend it. Plays out the magic. He's going to toss it up to the center. Sunshine for the challenge. Cannot beat him. Magic for a shot on oh the target. And he makes goodness. it far left side. Happy Camper just coming in for a little bit of celebratory goalie. Well, Magic living up to his name, just making Magic happen over and over. And now you're really seeing the strings start to fall apart for William and Mary. Uh, it's been a really tough day for them, but now Hofstra doing everything all over the field, just dominating them so far here in Game 3. And it ain't over till it's over. Two minutes. I, this match is so close that I'm just like, yeah, William and Mary, they, they can do this. They, they, they yeah. could reasonably do this. And yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's that's the crazy thing, though. It's like, I've said that, yet we've only seen one goal from William & Mary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I look at it, I'm like, yeah, like, William & Mary, they're playing good. You know, they're just... Oh, just oh, oh, Sunshine! Did he make one? Oh, He's got one! Dang. Finally! Oh. oh, we believed in him the whole time. All right, he's broken the barrier. He's broken the stigmatism. Now he needs two more, Cool J. You've broken the curse. You're feeling better. Can he do it? Yeah, once you open the floodgates, that's what it's all about. We've seen it from teams like UTA. Once you get that one goal, then it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, the possibilities are limitless here. Legacy puts one right on goal there. And look at the confidence from this team now. Legacy, Chimney, Sunshine, all coming forward, all smelling blood in the water. Happy Camper and the rest of this Hofstra squad. I'm not sure that they know how to react. So far, they are reacting well, though. Happy Camper putting it on goal. Oh, my. Target just a little bit. No one there to follow up on that rebound. That could have been goal number four for Hofstra there, but not going to find it. No, now just trying to get the ball out of their half ASAP. They understand they have to make some drastic measures, and that's okay. When you're playing down goals, sometimes you got to make some risks, and they clearly understand that. They're playing aggressive out of their half. It leads the goal for Happy Camper. He's going to miss it wide left, but all this is time off the clock. A clear cross ball all the way down the field. Hofstra might just finally be punished for all their aggression. Oh, no. And they are. Chimney yeah. puts in a second. Have the floodgates open, Cool J. Oh, right. Well, the presents are coming down the chimney, and it wasn't a Mountain Dew that time. Kyle couldn't get the save. And there we go. Chimney going to get this score there. Now to within one, William and Mary is trying to make this a series, but they've still got one more goal to go. 40 seconds left. They need to tie it up or this series ends here and now. Close one. Looking oh. For one more try to tie this one up in a neat little bow on top of the present that came from the chimney. It's convoluted, but they got there. Four to two now with 30 seconds. I'm fearing for William and Mary. I'm not going to lie, Cool J. They've got a shot. They've got time. All they need is their wits about them. Sunshine's going to win the kickoff. Played into the far corner. Kyle up the wall. Awkward bounce, but he's going to control it pretty well. Straight into the welcoming arms. Oh, no, Chimney! What have you... Oh, my Lord! Magic, let him live, please! They've got families! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Magic. He almost danced around all three of them. But with 10 seconds left to go, they need a score right now, and then they need a kickoff goal. Can William and Mary do it as time ticks down? The chances dwindle. Oh I my don't think goodness. they can do it. I don't and think I, they can I do it, Cool J. Just about it. William and Mary put up a valiant oh. effort, but Hofstra, in the end, take the victory. 5 2 in game three and 3 0 for the series. A clean sweep from Hofstra. Man, what a game. And. With that, I would like to officially retire as uh, mm. my, my coaching career is now over. 0-1. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 0-1. The big goose What a legacy. Coach Dorr. Oh, man. All what right. kind of coach are you? Oof. <laughs> so, closing things out, we saw a lot of games tonight. I think that UT Arlington game, I don't know how you top it.
That was some yeah. of the most ridiculous Rocket League I've seen in a long time. But this follows it up for a close second. William and Mary tugging at my heartstrings constantly. They're not able to pull it off. Hofstra, they're just too dominant. They look, they look too good, Cool J. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do about them. What I want to see is when these teams start start playing, you know, cross regional. I start going a bit, a bit here and there, and we start seeing some of the big boys play against each other. I know we got to see the Battle of Texas earlier. We got to see UD versus RIT. Well, there's some new big teams in the mix that we've seen today. And when those guys start mingling, that's when it gets exciting. For this match, though, we got to pick an MVP. Who's it going to be for you, Cool J? Oh, man. Um, that is always a difficult question. I did really love um, Vico earlier on. But, man, after the performance from Samba, bringing his team back, the reverse sweep, I don't know how I can pick anyone else. So I'm sorry, Dico. Valiant effort, you're my honorable mention, but Samba, MVP, my MVP of the night. Incredible stuff from you. Absolutely, and it was a strong one from Hofstra as well. I got to hand it to Kyle early on. Those first games, all decided by him. All the pressure they created later on. The teamwork came in, and they all started beating people up left and right. But, again, I got to give it to the man himself. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, EGF action going on all week. Tomorrow, it's going to be Overwatch here on official EGF as well as EGF OW. So be sure to tune in for any of that that you would like to catch all of the collegiate esports you could ever want. If you want to go ahead and follow on Twitter, I believe it's at official EGF over there as well. If you want to follow Cool J at Cool J underscore. If you want to follow me, it's at door underscore cast on Twitter. It helps us out both massively as well as for EGF as well as just staying tuned, following the Twitch channel and keeping in for all the action. Because I promise you guys, it only gets better the longer this season goes. As for tonight though, I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, Don't yeah. forget to vote. Don't forget to support Collegiate Esports and have a wonderful night.